and, and the the fun competition that that is. Which I mean, I think that that this rivals has actually been really good. Have you been following it at all, Blippa? Like, do you understand like um, format, anything like that? Uh, Probably not, right? Jungling. Uh, I don't know. Taiwan jungling. Yeah, uh, I saw yeah. that. Yeah, I get to play um, against him today. Nice. Uh, I don't really follow the format or anything, but I think yeah. it's really cool. Like, I think it gives a chance for like people that are good at the game to show off a little bit, mm -hmm. like people that are outside of the big bubble, I guess, of popular people. Yep. Uh, they get to show off like some of their skill and, and, and promote themselves as a, as a streamer or whatever, and people yeah. just get to have fun. Though. I think that's really cool. Yeah, no, I think you should play it, Blippo. I think it's the right, right thing to do it. Then when you just push the lane twenty four seven, you can just go. Well, it's not really my jungler, is it? Like, oh fucking, what's this jungler doing? Like, what are you doing? Just come on, play up, like. <laughs> then, then it's legit what you're doing. Your style and fit up. I don't disagree. I don't disagree. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's actually been a really good format this time because it has like all ELOs like so it kind of just averaged everyone's rating and then you just end up with like mixed teams of like plat players with challenger players, etc. So I feel like that's just a, a, a more fun tournament because before like when, okay. when it was supposed to be so it's a bit like Schalke then. Yeah, yeah, no. Oh, sorry, did I say that allowed? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's more like Schalke. I mean, we'll get into Schalke in a minute because I know that this guy has some opinions on on Forgiven, man. I was watching his stream. I saw the VOD. Oh, no, people, no, people, okay. people were sending me everything about that. So, I mean, I, l l l let's just get right into that. What, what's your opinion on uh, on Forgiven, you know, leaving Schalke, like that whole dumpster fire that's been Schalke so far and, you know, um, maybe his I attitude? Mean, like, you don't have the whole picture. Like, you never really do. So, obviously, mm -hmm. it's hard to tell. Um I think that if had he been replaced in a way for a substitute, I don't think that would have been nearly as bad as him openly saying that um, my team is shit. Basically saying my team doesn't want to win, so I'm gonna leave until they try to win. In my eyes, like that's what bothered me. Like him getting replaced as an AD carry and trying a substitute. I mean, I was in the same position, right? I I came in and I played in Saas's place, which was you know a very well respected top laner, and I got a shot, right? And then in that sense, giving Amax a shot, it makes sense, right? You're zero seven down or you're zero six down, you might as well try something, right? Yeah, um, but him coming out on top of that being like, F fuck this team. Um, I don't agree with the decisions we're making. So fuck y'all, I'm out is basically throwing in the towel. And I think that's just pathetic, honestly. Like uh, at that point, well, as soon as there's competition for your role, um, you throw in the towel seems really weird. Because I imagine, like from my perspective, I imagine that the reason he said that is because uh, their staff was probably insinuating something like uh, trying out a different player. Like, why would you think like why like i wonder when he makes that statement is where does that come from right mm -hmm. i mean I, personally the way i see it is knowing forgiven i feel like maybe it's it's more about his legacy you know he's always been known as a really good player in, in lec right. and maybe the fact that they're losing so much he views as like damaging to him it reflects poorly on him and instead of like trying to fix it maybe he thinks the situation is not winnable maybe it's more of like a hey i'm just gonna back out of this thing now so i don't get like i don't end up on the zero eighteen 18 team and become like laughing stop maybe it's like self-preservation yeah, but that's the problem there, right? Here's the problem with what you just said there, Dom. Let's uh, let's imagine, let's take that premise as though it was accepted. Like, that's the way he's thinking, and he's thinking, right, sure. well, you know what? It's gone really badly already. So exactly like you're saying, rather than go 0-18 and get completely, like, uh, become a laughing stock, I'll dock out now while it's, like, what was it, zero six 6 at yep. the time? Right, I'll just dock out now, no big deal. Except, look what happened. <laughs> they then went and beat the best team in the league. Therefore, now you look twice as stupid. And you know what's even better? You have no chance to make it up now. You can't now come in next week and then play and get your chance back and show that you're... In fact, that's the stupidest thing. If, as Whippo said, it's just that you were replaced, it wasn't even your choice, right? That's not even any disrespect on you. Yeah, the community will say, well, you weren't as good. That's why they, your own team chose to replace you. But let's say that's real. There's competition for the spot, right? Now imagine that the same thing happens. They beat G2 now, but you start competing for the spot again. If you win that spot back and the team's fixed itself, hey, that's a brilliant fucking storyline. One of the problems with this situation is from no one forgiven for a long time, time the longer i've known him his like narrative of how he sets up what happens in his teams has gotten less and less plausible because when i first knew him he was in legitimately bad teams he was in teams where the other players not only weren't as good but some of them would literally be a plat player in the u.s and they weren't even trying to get better they were just like i'm fine with being just a bad pro basically so at that point in time all of his complaints made sense when he makes this narrative that like he's the only one who's a winner and the only one who has the right mindset and everyone else is like betraying him or letting him down or you know, like, like literally calling them retards and stuff. Like, that made vague sense then because I thought, right, it's just a really hyper-competitive guy and he just wants to win. And what I realized over the years is it's not true. He doesn't want to win. He only wants to win when everyone does exactly what he wants. And if for one second they don't, 
He literally does the same thing. Basically says, like, fuck them, they're losers, and it's not my fault that if we lose, and I don't even have to play in this team. Even when, and this is what broke it for me, was when he was in that H2K lineup. Because if you go and look at the lineup of players in that Yankos team, Odo, those are some of the best players to ever play those positions in fucking European League of Legends history. And that team wasn't good enough for him. Even that team, he had the same excuses. Like, oh, the journalist's not doing what I want, and then this top player's an idiot, and then the coach doesn't fucking draft the way I want. It's like, at this point in time, forgiven, like, what do you think's going to happen? Do you think that, like, fucking RNG's just going to say, you know what, Uzi, I get the fuck out. We're taking forgiven into your role and giving him the same treatment we gave you for 10 years. No. The whole point is, that's like, like that's ridiculous. I've seen top players, Reckless included. Reckless was on that dog shit elements team that finished like seventh at one split. He didn't just quit after four games. Yeah, he, he quit after the split. That sucks in, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. That's, but that's appropriate. Like, yeah, that is the time when you should quit. You, yeah. you, do your, you do your service, as it were. You signed up for that. You signed up to be a player. There's plenty of players. My mate Freeze out there would fucking kill someone to be in the LEC. This guy had a spot in the LEC and then claims he gave it up. And by the way, I'm just going to go ahead and say this right now. He didn't give it up. That was a lie. He literally lied to the public. He was replaced, as Whipple was alluding to there. I mean, they basically I, I, just showed... I know it's a fact, mate. They basically oh, man, just I mean, showed... Oh, shit, we got the, we got the, the fucking... Uh, we got the they hot They basically take. just yeah, showed I, us I, to put the other guy in. makes sense, right? Because Jungle were replaced and he doesn't say anything. And then all of a sudden, like, Inax getting put in the team like that, it just doesn't really make sense. Yeah. It didn't, like, I mean, I just don't think, like... I don't think a player like Whippo with his level of, e or sorry, a player like Forgiven with his level, <laughs> level of ego, Whippo, like, I don't think that, that Forgiven would be able to, like, actually say, hey, I got benched. Like, no, I don't think he could publicly it. say that. So, I so, mean, uh, I mean, I mean, I like, you, why, said, but yeah, I guess. like you said, it, it didn't look great, right? I mean, I mean, you're the one that, that gave the quote. This is the first time he's won lane since, since he uh, came back from the army, right? So he wasn't winning lane in, in, in LAC at all. Oh, I watched the whole video. Oh, I, I watched your whole VODs, man. I'm fucking prepared for this shit. Don't, don't even <laughs> fucking try me on, on that. That was a joke. But yeah, I mean, it, like he, he was not winning lane in, in LAC. Like none of the lanes looked good for him. And the, it seems like he's always had draft issues, right? Like, he doesn't play the things that are super OP. Like, it didn't seem like he was as practiced as on Aphelio Senna, stuff like that. So they have to draft lanes that don't make sense, like Zaya Nautilus, like things like that, where it's just like, mm, like you'd want Zaya pretty much only with Rakan in this meta for other teams. So, oh, yeah. Oh, there's another thing, Dom, right? If you're going to play, and you're not even going to play the most broken champions at your role... You're basically saying to the rest of your team, by the way, this is something I've always actually held as a criticism of Froggen, is like he also can't talk shit on his teammates if he's going to play it his particular way and not play like the most broken, like aggressive mid lane champion. If you're going to do that, you are putting a limitation on your teammates. So yep. you now better be very understanding where they have limitations. Like maybe your jungler isn't very good because you picked him up at the last second when no one else was available and you're having to give a guy another chance. Maybe your top player has problems getting into the game in the first few games of the season and doesn't to play the carry chat right you better be understanding because they're being understanding to you the problem for given as is in his mind he never leaves the top of fucking mount olympus that he was in on like end of season pick whichever one he wants season four Five, season six, six when yeah. he was like the absolute best like he was the western uzi eye to him in his mind he's still that now and everything else is everyone else's fault what he doesn't realize is he ain't even that anymore like you could put up with a lot like a, a lot of people will put up with it. I mean, Fnatic players know this. You can have a big ego as long as your game like, <laughs> like justifies it. If you really are like that good and you know what you're asking for, hey, we can give you those resources you want, man. Maybe you'll win the game for us. In this particular case, it's not even like giving for giving everything he wanted. He was going to win them the game. He certainly wasn't the worst player on the team. I'll say that. Like he was one of the better players on the team for most of the split. It was a pretty bad team, to be fair. The whole team looked like it collapsed. Maybe. Itself. I mean, I feel like that, yeah. that's even arguable right there. Like if you look at the, the players, it's like, hmm. I don't know if Forgiven was playing better. Like, at least Abadage was, like, winning some lanes and then throwing the game. Like, Forgiven was just no, kind of the there. the problem I have with that, Dom, is, like, the job of an AD carry takes place in the team fight, and those guys never peeled for him in almost any of these team fights, I saw. Like, that team, that's why you know there was no trust whatsoever in that team. That also, by the way, is an area where Forgiven also never gets it. I've told him so many times, mate, if every fucking teammate you have betrays you and won't trust you and won't do anything, you're doing a terrible job cultivating relationships with your teammates. Like, the whole thing is, if you could win those guys over and convince them of what you're telling me, that you're the best player and you'll carry the game... You'd think they don't want to win the game. Some of these guys are like brand new. So like sometimes you have rookie teammates as well. Like that guy, if you tell him, listen, do everything I'm saying now, we'll win the game. 
If it, if it was true, they'll do it. Like, the idea that you can't convince them, well, then, well, what do you want then? If you can't convince your own teammates it's the right move, why the fuck should anyone else listen? I agree with this. That's a really strong point. That's a really yeah, I mean, I, I just don't have, like, the, the thing for me is, I, I like Forgiven, right? He's one of my friends. I, I respect, like, his career and stuff like this. The only person that I will give sympathy to on this lineup is Odo Omne. He's the only... I, I feel like he's along for the, for the ride, and I feel like Odo's actually, like... If you look at the games, like, most of the games he's, he's playing well, like, I don't think he deserves to be 1-7 in, in, in LEC right now, you know? Also, so. think about that, Dom. So, everyone would probably agree with you right now. Odo Amne, not only is the best player on that team, but actually has looked good in spite of how bad that team looked at times, like the week before Forgiven left. But then the sickest thing about that is, where's he quitting? Where's he just calling everyone out and throwing yeah. everyone under the fucking bus? He's, he's going through the pain. He's multiple bad splits. He just, he just, he's just a fucking man, so right. he, just, he just socks it up and just plays the game. Even when, until about three weeks ago, everyone was including him in the dumpster file. Like, oh, he sucks as well. So that's just a consequence of being on a bad team, unfortunately. But you're going to have to go through it. And here's what people don't realize, is the way you react when you're at the bottom actually sets the table for how you'll react when you're at the top. So if you if you react like a spoiled child and you just like throw all your toys out the pram, you refuse to accept any responsibility, you won't even expect responsibility for your own player, why the fuck would I ever recruit you to a top team? Why would I go and put all these expensive players around you and a coaching staff and boot camp? Why would I do that if I know you're not even willing to buy in at the bottom? Like what, you'll only play properly or be a real teammate when everything's perfect for you. Then it ain't the right career for you, mate. Being a professional player isn't for you. You don't get to be on top all the time. Nobody does. If you're only willing to, be, to actually do your job when you're on top, get the fuck out. I mean, I 100% agree. I, I think one of the biggest like props I have for Adamne is that I feel like he's also like the least problematic when it comes to draft. Like he's basically just telling Dylan, like, hey, just pick me a truck. Yeah, get pick me a truck. Looks like it, yeah. And just let me play the game. I'm going to do my job. I'm going to be good in the game. Just try to make sure that everybody else has some space to breathe. And I think that's really valuable from a player that's actually performing on that pick, right? Um, it's something that, like, it's hard to do in certain metas. And I feel like, obviously, the meta does allow him to do it. But he's doing a good job of doing it. And I, I want to give props to that because it makes opportunities for, like, let's say Abadagi gets a counter pick more often on red side, right? Because uh, Odoam is taking his, his Aatrox Glad. early on. Yeah. Or... Um, same goes for Forgiven or whoever is playing bot lane, who is playing jungle. Like, you give more breathing room to your teammates. So I feel like he's doing his best in making his team, like, well, get to play the game in yeah. a way. Because yeah. uh, it's really easy to be in that situation. You're like, all right, it's four weeks in. I haven't seen any of my teammates do jack shit with counter pick or do anything in general. So how about we do a draft where you blind pick uh, Sejuani, you blind pick uh, Cassiopeia. Um, Maybe my support plays Nautilus or Leona, and then I'm going to go ahead and get, take on a pick, and you're all going to be my dogs. I, I, feel, I feel like that's more of kind of the, the Cabochard uh, style of, of being on a bad which team. Which is, right, right, which is like, it, it works, but it really doesn't. Like, yeah. it, it has a limit, right? Well, it, it's not a, it's a band-aid. It's not a solution, right? Well, it's not a solution to the fact that your mid lane I can't counter pick, or your AD carry or your jungler can't actually make use out of the counter pick. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like it's but also way, it's also pretty selfish, it? you know. Like it, it's more of like it a is. way where you just try to look good yourself. You're like, sure. okay, this team is fucking doomed no matter what. I'm just gonna try to keep my value up and right. make myself look the best as possible instead of actually trying to win. Like it looks like Odo right. still wants to win. Like he's still going to every day. Like maybe we can turn this around. Maybe we can get like the sixth no, seed in playoffs. This is the point, mate. This is the, this is probably the most criminal element of the way this discussion is set up. Because when you even say to someone the team was zero and six, it makes it sound like forgiven as a point, but he doesn't. Here's why he has no point whatsoever. First of all, why did you join this team? What you didn't know any of these players? You've even played with some of them before. That's bullshit. You knew how good these players. Well, secondly, and I'm sure Whipple can attest to this, the reason why everyone memed on Euphoria when they ranked, like, Schalke in, like, the fucking A, a tier or whatever of, like, their league, and they, have to, they had them ranked above Fnatic, if you remember, mm -hmm. was because in the preseason scrims, they were actually winning a whole bunch of scrims against people. Like, they were actually looking good. Like, the idea of this team was just always shit and was always... No, it wasn't. Like, that's why the idea they could turn it around and possibly win some games out isn't impossible. Like, Forgiven also has a massive problem where he does that. Like, he 
he's some, one of these like static thinkers where when things are bad, they're always going to be bad. They can never improve. Like it's not his fault. Like it's a waste of time. Like that's also not a winner's mindset. Like a winner's mindset is like, what do I have right now? This is the situation. Can I make that even slightly better? That's how you win by getting the most out of what you have, by encouraging a player to improve, by figuring out a teammate who maybe can't do something, but you can cover a weakness of his. I've never seen him do any of that shit, mate. I've just seen him sit in the game do his job in the past at least very well and then usually he even has that like mad feminine quality where he doesn't even tell someone what they're doing wrong he just expects <laughs> you to know that you're doing it wrong oh, and if you don't do that like, oh, he's, like that, he's like that girlfriend what is like, this timeline oh, are you, what is are you this upset? timeline and then she's like, no, I'm okay. Yeah, I'm and then fine. you're like, all oh, right, I'll see you then. Yeah, I'll go out then. And then she's like, oh my God, I can't believe you're just going out and you think it's just okay. It's like, what the fuck? I thought you said it's okay. Yeah. He's like that. Like, hey, like, that's why that joke that he doesn't even tell the jungler to come. It's like, well, you should already know. You should already know to be in my lane. And then you would fucking kill Like, give me a break. Going, yeah, mind yeah. reading that way. Give me a God. break. Uh, I, I know yeah. Wimbo is low key loving this. I don't know if you saw it, Thorne, but uh, there was, oh, was a. There was a, a, a pretty a pretty quality video that I saw from a Bwipo stream of just forgiven, just going off in a game, calling like everyone dogs in one of uh, during one of Bwipo's streams, and just yeah. listening to like Bwipo react. It's like, how can you be like this this crazy man? I'm auto filled mid. I'm trying my best. How could how could you actually like throw this much shade? So I know that Bwipo like low key loves I mean, the forgiven flame right now. I mean, no, I I actually don't I don't like flaming him at all. Like, don't get me wrong, you know, like from his perspective, he, he he's struggling, you know. So like mm -hmm. kicking him when he's down is kind of hard. Like I, I don't feel good about it. But yeah. like in general, the perspective of uh, the way I feel about it is the, the reason why I was so triggered in that video is because we fucked up, we made a bad play, then I recovered the play, we came back, and then he ended up dying to punt on ulting him. Yep. Which is like the most obvious fucking thing. It's the only thing the champ can do is roam and kill someone, right? And then he blames everybody else. And that's what fucked me off. It's like the game was in a shit state. Then it went good. But then because you fucked up and got punished, it's all of a sudden still our fault. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like the ball gets thrown back and forth, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's a back and forth game. The ball was in their court. We took it back. It's our yeah. turn. We made a play. It was good. And then you fucked up. No one else did. Yeah. And you're still like flipping off because people yeah. fucked up earlier and that's just triggers me like i hate this it's like the game's in your hands now it wasn't earlier and i agree that it was fucked but they fucked up so now it's in your hands you threw and it's still our fault yeah no it makes yeah, sense I'm just, I'm just mad i'm i'm I'm, I, I, I'm i'm sorry but like what can i do other than like the game's fucked i i get it back and then he's just mad about the fact that it was lost yeah, five makes, minutes ago makes when it's sense. just like <laughs> Like that's why I was really mad at him. But yeah, in general, no, like, I, mean, I don't I, have anything against him. I just him and... enjoyed it. I was I was more entertained than I like to get <laughs> I, anything. I know, I know. A lot of people probably enjoy it, that. It's the I, same I, way. I, like I... people see clips of me flaming people on Reddit, and there's a lot of people that will like hate me for it. But a lot of people are just like, oh, that's some funny shit. Like I love seeing somebody just like right get I get mean, triggered. I had, you know? I had LEC players at the LEC. Like you should stream more. That was funny. And so <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. So, like don't get me wrong. It, it, it's not yeah. that. It's just. I feel bad that uh, people think I have a very, very bad outlook on Forgiven. Like, don't get me wrong. I think that if it's true that he quit because someone was contesting his spot, that that's just pathetic, in my opinion. I'll tell yeah. you straight up. Like, as okay. soon as you get competition, and this is something I've told my coaching staff for the past two years, right? Because 2019 spring was not a good spring for me. Uh, and there was discussion of getting a sixth player for top lane. And I just told him straight up, if you can find someone that's better than me in any dimension, right? If you can find a planet where this player might be better than me, then go ahead, get me someone that's better. Worst case... I get off the team, but I can actually learn from the guy and get better, right? I'll be better for the next year. Yeah. I'm not thinking short term, like, oh, I'm going to lose my job in six months. That's just not going to happen, right? As long as I put in the effort and the work ethic, right? Because if I compare myself to the other competition, it's not to say that I'm scraping at the bottom of the barrel trying to get by, right? Mm -hmm. I'm competing to be the best, right? So if someone can come into the team and teach me a thing or two, even if that's just not being a cunt to my teammates, maybe that's what needs to happen, right? Because maybe that's all you need right but that's maybe that's all forgiven needs not yeah. being a cunt yeah no, and, then, uh, and then all of a sudden he is a top tier teammate he is a top tier player and, and his performance will recover right mm -hmm. maybe oh, the sad thing is I, I actually think you're right because i've always said it's never even about teammates i've always said the number one thing i always thought forgiven needed was a coach that sort of understood his problems and could somehow like this will sound strange but like translate what forgiven means when he says something that sounds toxic to a teammate in a way in a language they would understand like what he really means sometimes that sounds like he's just flaming you is like oh i actually wasn't as confident in this pick so I needed help in the early game or something like that. But he would never say it that way. He would just make it like, you know, you didn't understand what you were doing. Like, you just, where were you? So, like, the problem with that is, though, like, 
that's a that's a high maintenance player if the coach has to play that role. Like, there's a lot of players in League of Legends don't need that. So if you're going to be someone like Forgiven, you better be the absolute best at your role if you're going to make all these demands of other people. Because at the end of the day, you can just take a different AD carry, put him in, and he can do your job at the moment. Yep. I mean, it's it's just a matter of like you basically need to be the only way your team can win at that stage. Yeah. No, I don't even think you need to be the best AD carry player. That, that, that that's not enough. Like you need to have everyone around you not be able to carry the game, right? Because anybody that will get so much shit in feedback every single time, like they have to be able to handle it at some point, right? And the only way you handle that is that it's just the only way we can win. Yeah. Like me as a player, for example, I, mean, that's saying I, I would, I would handle reason, that. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Like if, if it was the only way I could win, I would handle that type of behavior, right? It's just, yes. I, I can't win if I don't. But if I was just like, you know what? Instead of listening to all this shit, why don't you pick whatever champ or we get someone else and, and just go even then I'm going to take care of it. You know, like, it's just... Yeah. I mean, yeah, we can I even mean... tie this into your career, right, Bwip? Or if we look at the Fnatic you were on where you were in the yeah. World's Final, winning all the LECs, right. etc., and then the year after where it was the same team, but just without caps, the difference right. is when you're not winning, and especially if you have, like, a losing streak like you have, yeah, the, the problems that were just minor problems, and they were in the background before, the, right. that's the whole story now, isn't it? Like, to deal with that becomes way harder. Right. It does. Like, the, the thing that people don't realise is when you, when you start losing, it's like... like there's always going to be a dark period, no matter what, right? Yeah. Like right now, like it could it can happen to any team at any given point. I mean, not really, but follow me on this one. Mm -hmm. In the sense of your team can slump, right? Some things can go wrong, and it's a matter of finding the solution. And I think that's why G two is such a strong team and has been over the past year. In the sense of like, every time they slump, they found a way to get back. Twenty eighteen. If you look at summer playoffs, G two completely flopped. Yep. They went into the gauntlet, like, everyone thought they were done, you know, yeah, they like, lost done. 2018 G2, they're, they're, they're done, they're, they're out in quarters, the, the gauntlet's gonna be, they're gonna bomb it, it's done. But because, well, I don't really know why, because I was never told, but somehow, from that, they went to semi-final, right? Yep. It's overshadowed by the fact that we made finals, but still, they were a top four team at Worlds, and they looked yeah. good. And they got three, it, and they got three would probably less hard than you guys got three would in the finals. So who who the fuck knows at that point, dude? They might have been the second best team in the world. Oh no, I know, I know about that one, dude. You can rewatch the games. I know you probably haven't since then, but you okay, know. By that logic, by that logic, we were better than G two because we beat. FTX one game. True, 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 true. No, I'm, true I'm, I'm just joking around with that. But I mean, I guess uh, I, I guess you. before we, we jump completely off the forgiven topic, which, which it seems like we're about to do, I guess one last thing I want to hear from both of you guys. Do you think that this is the end of Forgiven's career? Do you think he'll ever play another LEC game? Uh, it should be. I don't think you, you should ever be allowed to come back after doing that. I'm sorry. Like, I, I, it's not that I hate the guy or have anything against him. Like, don't get me wrong. A lot of the, the shit I said on stream was because I was just molding because I was losing a solo queue game. And oh, of course. And, oh, and I, I mauled way harder than that. That was light. That was light. Whatever you did, you know. So, so like, I was mad, but in reality, I have respect. I have respect for what he's accomplished in the past, mm -hmm. right? But uh, I feel like the reality now is that this it's, type it's of behavior over. should not be allowed. And if he gets a chance, then I just feel bad for whoever felt the need to take that on his team. Yeah, like I just feel bad. Like you, if, you if, agree, if, if you're down that low. Well, the stupidest part to me is, as far as I'm aware, the whole reason he's done this stupid statement, which, remember, like you, this is the reason you have to understand this guy, his way of thinking, doesn't align with anyone else in professional League of Legends right now. He actually thought that statement was going to be, like, satisfying to the public and the rest of the community, and that people would go, wow, great statement, yeah. He have mutually decided to stand down. This is, fi this is fine. This is all fine. Everyone looked at that, everyone, and was just like, what the fuck is that? Like... Like that's the worst. It's like because literally he thought he was phrasing it professionally. Like you, bit, the, that statement basically just said, "Fuck my team, they're all shit," and because they're all shit, and the team won't just buy the players out. I'm I'm quitting mutually. I don't even know what the fuck that means. There's no there's no such thing as a mutual breakup. It's impossible. Mutual breakup is when your girlfriend tells you she's dumping you, and you go, "Well, maybe it's for the better." Like that's a mutual breakup. Like that <laughs> it doesn't exist. Like you you didn't choose that, homie. You just learned to live with it. So same scenario. He they didn't mutually break up. It's complete nonsense. So I would say this. The stupidest thing about that is I actually do think he entertains the fantasy that when he leaves, because this is also another immature thing about him, he secretly believes where, because it's true, most of the teams in the past he left, 
never were as good without him. It's like that childish fantasy. Like, you know, when people who are young, one of the tragic reasons, actually, that some people commit suicide is they think that everyone around them who, you know, mistreated them or didn't like them, that they're all going to wake up and go, oh, my God, oh, why did I do that? Oh, like, like, we should have cherished them when they were here. But the reality is, if you're a guy who's actually on the bottom of society, sadly, most of those people won't do that. Like, your fantasy isn't true. And you won't be there to see it anyway. You'll just be gone and everyone will just go, oh, it's a shame that that guy I didn't really like has gone, whatever, and move on with their life. So that's why it's an immature fantasy. He has that fantasy, I think, that he would leave. They'd be even worse within X. Maybe they even would go 0 and 18. Then Schalke would go, hmm, that Forgiven was kind of right. They would buy, like, a good player. Then they'd go, oh, please come back, Forgiven. And then he'd come back in in the summer and he goes, yeah, now it's time to play some legal. And then he'd be really good. Like, But that's, that is like the, the dreams of a fucking child that's never been in the LEC. Like, no adult should be thinking that way. It's not going to happen. So the answer is, unless it's in Schalke, no. I think there's literally Zemo team is going to give him a chance in LEC, especially because he didn't kill it with his player. That is the stupidest part of all of this. If his player had somehow been really high level and then all this had happened, someone might be willing to gamble and say, well, you know what? That's still better than the player I've got. So if I can deal with... Because that's what you do with a Dardock of Forgiven. You have to say... Do I think I can deal with all the bullshit that comes with them? Now, if they're amazing as a player, that's a pretty good reason to keep thinking, ah, maybe I could deal with it, though. It's better than gambling on this bad guy. If you just think he was also one of the, like, average to below average AD carries, why would you waste your time? Like, I wouldn't. Yeah, at this point in time, you need, like, an entire fucking team of... You need to, like, reincarnate fucking Sigmund Freud... <laughs> young and all those boys from back in the day get him on a couch somewhere be exploring his home that's just to get him into the lane with like a fucking Aphelios <laughs> pick mate it's too much effort I'd just rather have someone who can play AD carry in 2020 yeah. makes sense I don't need a fucking DeLorean <laughs> no that yeah. makes sense I mean I think the only time you would like accept that type of behaviour is like I said is, is if you literally <laughs> can't otherwise right like as players you've reached a point where it's just it's fucked you know like as a team you're just like it's fucked like our split's fucked everything's fucked but this is not six zero, uh, zero six. This is like zero and fourteen, zero and twelve. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. At that point, you're just like, you know what? Like, we're not even. We're, like, there's not even a point in playing yeah. out the split because we're not going anywhere anyway. How the fuck is someone giving up after three weeks? Well, I mean, also, it's, it's like a- I said. I said this on someone in Insight, right? Yeah. The stupidest part about this is he makes it sound like playing on this team was torture. Like it is just sitting in a chair playing League of Legends. Like you can't handle four weeks of that. If you can't handle four weeks, guess um, what? Get the fuck out. You are not oh. a pro player. Go play solo queue. Go play some dog shit game where you get like the top rank in Neo Pets or something. Go look at the talent of me as a gamer. Like no one gives a fuck. Have four weeks of that. If you can't handle four weeks of playing video games, you are not a strong individual. You are a weak individual. So you need to go away and fix that shit. Oh, shit. We're not we're not here to fix you, mate. We're like this yeah. this is about being a professional League of Legends player, not fixing your life and your mentality. Yeah. That's not on the payroll of Shalkin. Like the coaches are just there to coach the game the players are there to play the game yeah it, it, did, it, it, it did actually feel like the 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 negativity affected the team because if you look at the first two weeks the first four games they were zero four but it wasn't like they just were getting dicked every fucking game like they got dicked in week three you they know? had a bunch of games where yeah. they had leads no, and they, they just fucked it all yeah, through the game yeah exactly. they, were, they were like what 6k ahead against mad lions and mad lions ended up being a decent team Obviously, they look they, they look pretty good right now. Right. Um, they had the the other game where Abadage got a triple kill top. He's like 4-0, 5-0 in the game. He's smurfing on the game. They end up losing that one. It wasn't like they were just getting destroyed every fucking game, like to the point where it was like, this looks hopeless. It just seems like the negativity from that actually being like chalked up on the scoreboard as losses ended up affecting like the whole team's mentality. And I assume that, that a lot of that was through Forgiven right. being like so negative about like situations and even like the the small things that, that you get the small bits of content from the team which i ended up watching were like they do the, the shalka voice comms things and and even like at the end of it man like obviously they're gonna pick and choose what they put in their fucking content right. but even at the end of, of the the games you hear like forgiven like oh this was a fucking terrible game what the fuck are we doing like shit like <laughs> shit like that and i'm like god damn like what what else was being said in that game when you're actually including that in the content that you're putting out to make your team look good like that's that's how I feel about that. I mean, I feel like uh, like a really big issue and like a bit a huge red flag that I feel like people missed was that like the amount of complaint complaints he put about solo queue in on Twitter like pretty much every single day every week. It's like it honestly, looked like my like, Twitter account. It was insane. No, it's way worse, right? Because, like, <laughs> it's 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 just like the problem is. is that, I can somewhat relate now because, um, funnily enough, I'm I'm rank I've, I've been rank one for a bit, right? I'm gonna yeah. check right now. Actually, am I still rank one before I make the statement? I am currently rank one. Yeah. Oh my god! I can right, myself. That's my clickbait right there. On Europe, right there. But um, the, <laughs> the 
point is, is that my MMR is really fucking high, right? So if you actually go and check my match history, it's often and even normal for me to get matched with people that are significantly lower. It's not uncommon for me to have That's a game. That's the way the MMR where, system works, yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's not uncommon for I have a game where all of my teammates, my four teammates, all their LP combined times two is less than mine. Yep. Or like almost as much as mine, right? Mm -hmm. So right now I'm feeling like I'm getting fucking inted, right? Because I'm playing with players and I'm just like, what is this guy doing, right? I'm yeah. getting, I'm molding, right? Like this was me when I was tryharding, you know, I wanted to hit the LP record, you know, I was like 16, 80 or something. And I what was like, I'm, I'm going for it. I'm 15, 69. <laughs> Only 15, 69, dude? <laughs> what the hell? Anyway, my point is, is I was really <laughs> trying to hit that LP. I wanted to be 17, 1800, you know, I wanted to break it. You know, I wanted to be mm -hmm. like highest MMI anyone's ever been, right? Mm -hmm. And at that point, I was just, I was fuming because I was playing with people. Like I was playing against my, my Fnatic duo bot lane on the enemy team. And I would, they would queue up separately and I would never have any of them on my teammate my team because their MMR was like 1k right they're 1k LP or whatever and I just couldn't have good players right I couldn't have it mm -hmm. but that's just how the system works right like if you don't even enjoy that if you don't enjoy the aspect of being the highest ranked player on your team and you have to carry the whole game with a bunch of fucking monkeys against players that are actually good how can you enjoy it pushing yourself like that every single day right like yeah. how can you push yourself that's a math no no you so what you, what you do yeah no exactly what you do is you retire and you start doing the, the crackdown that's what you do like. <laughs> but my point is just that like when forgiven didn't want like felt like he was getting inted when he was playing with uh whatever random that was playing poorly because again a lot of his examples in my opinion were just people having bad games right and i know it's a meme right because i'd be fucking pissed off if i had a 0 12 guy being an idiot and inting and i was right a week ago two weeks ago you talked to me i'd be fucking molding i was raging every like I, I wasn't raging in game but just like i'd be complaining to my teammates like oh I, I can never have a good team you know like it's so frustrating to play solo queue and this and that whereas now i'm just like you know what i'm just gonna pick my cha i'm just gonna pick a champion perform the best i can and if i lose then i lose fuck it right mm -hmm. because there's no point in trying to beat the system and i feel like he was trying to beat the system and he was trying to ban everybody that was bad at the game but that's how the system fucking works mate you get put with worse players than the enemy team when you're the best player on your team right so when you come into an lec team where Obviously, when he signed that team, when he signed on that team, there was no chance in hell that he felt like every single player was the best at his role. There's no fucking chance. Yeah. So of course you're going to get matched against a team like G2, and you're just gonna be, you're gonna get fucked around the board, right? Mm -hmm. And at that point, if you can't handle that in solo queue, right, where it doesn't even matter. Come on, you're playing for 20 points, right? Yep. How can you handle that when it actually matters? And it may not be week one, day two. It might be at playoffs, right? Like, in my head, this guy would go mental boom at some point mm -hmm. based on how he was behaving in solo queue. Because at some point, he would have to come to the realization that his teammates just aren't as good as the top of the league, right? Yep. That, that's something you have to accept. That's something I have to be prepared to accept as well, right? As a player, as well as my, my teammates. You know, it, it could just be that G2, like, at the end of the split, they just have better players around the board again. That's just, that's possible. That's what you come into a competition for. You open yourself and everybody you're playing with to accept to find out that's the whole fucking point yep. to queue up to find out who's the better player yeah makes sense uh, so I, I guess while we're on the topic of drama i mean one thing that uh that was mentioned last week by perks and uh obviously caps left fanatic went to, went to g2 and from his perspective uh and like what was said was kind of that fanatic has the reputation of being a drama team in uh mm. in the us at least more dramatic than g2 um, in terms of just like personal relations and stuff. Sure. So I guess um, my question to you would be like with the with Mithy stepping in as head coach with with mm. uh, the jungle change, et cetera, do you feel like that's moving in a positive direction? Do you guys feel like you're um, in, like kind of taking away from that, I guess flaw of of fanatic historically? Um, I mean, I feel like drama comes with personalities. And like uh, I feel like when you have strong personalities, there's always going to be something happening, right? Mm -hmm. Um. That said, I don't personally feel like our team has been more dramatic than others in the sense of like, there's problems and there's problems in every team. I just feel like our problems get blown out of proportion sometimes, you know? Mm -hmm. um, like for example, in the off season, I know Young Buck was throwing uh, quite a bit of shade and interviews yes. on us mm -hmm. as a team. And I feel like that's part of that blowing it a bit out of proportion in the sense of like, yeah, shit went down. People don't need to know if that makes sense. Like, I just don't feel like why this has to be public, if that makes sense. And I feel like a lot of the stuff that happens in our team turns out to be public, which means it's drama, right? Because if it's just between, uh, if it's a between you and me type of thing, but then the whole team, then it's not really drama. It's in the team, right? It's, it's not spread out. Like, I feel like some teams, they probably have a lot of shit going on, but no one can tell because they're just waterproof in a way. 
and and is it going in a better direction i mean let me put it this way we've got a lot more opinions there's a lot more stuff being like openly discussed and i think that's a very good step towards uh minimizing this type of drama because people don't feel the need to like blurt it out on an interview or something like that it's all being dealt with individually right like i've got a problem with self-made i'm going to tell them right now this is how it is i don't like you this and that yeah. whereas i feel like the oh, reason no. why people felt that way <laughs> well the reason why i felt that that was a thing where people had that notion of this drama is that because people couldn't see eye to eye right like let's say um if caps had a, a problem with broxa for example right let's say as an example like it wouldn't be natural for us to just be like hey that really fucked me off like i really don't like what you did there can you fix it it would be something that gets buried and and then eventually gets taken care of right or like me i have a problem with with, with martin it would be something that like i would like bury you know i'd be like i just hope he's gonna fix it mm-hmm. and then when he doesn't at some point i'll be like oh for fuck's sakes like do you know what i mean yeah i'm not saying that this is what happened it's just that, as an example that's what ends up happening and then all of a sudden it becomes drama because a week later or two weeks later you're like oh, fuck's sakes like two weeks ago this happened and you still haven't fixed it and then like but why didn't you tell me and then it becomes a huge mess whereas if you just confront each other when it happens that that fucked me off i didn't like that could we fix that you don't turn anything into anything it just it's a problem that gets solved mm-hmm. yeah makes sense um i guess one of the players you mentioned there was broxa um and a lot of people are kind yeah. of looking to broxa uh in na as like maybe the potential savior of uh of T- Team Liquid's uh, problems right now. And there's a lot of discussion around uh, how he is as a player. Like, um, hmm. if he if he's, like, somebody who's super mechanical, if he's somebody who's more on, like, the smart side where he's, like, supporting lanes, um, and how well, like, he, he can kind of fit into that role that TL needs. Because TL's normally a team that has a very, like, I guess, um, stern way on how they approach the game, or they have, like, a very definitive play style. Um, so I guess I wanted to know from your perspective, having played with him, do you think that that right. he's a player that that is like just mechanically gifted? Do you believe that he's more of the player that is is good at just communicating with his lanes, like supporting his lanes, being there when you need, kind of like the more Smithy esque type player? Um, like, what's your evaluation of him, and do you think that he'll actually uh, help Team Liquid's uh, problems in the long term? Uh, I think he carries both, right? Like, I think that's mm-hmm. the main value. Is so you just you think he's really good? Player. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think he's a really good player. Like. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. Well, I could edit at that, I suppose. <laughs> well, I mean, you could edit at that, he's but a really he... solid player. Mm-hmm. Um, whether or not he'll fix Team Liquid's problems is 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 unknown to me because I know what their problems are, right? Like, it's, wait, a a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Is that the problem? Like, right, I, I don't know. here's the thing: <clears throat> when you're a good player in any game or sport, right? It's not like a linear progression. You don't. It's not like League of Legends, the account. You don't start right. at level one and then go level two, and everyone who's at level thirty's right. been through level twenty-seven. You have strengths and weaknesses, right? Every player Obviously. does. Like, what's great is even the best players ever. I could take Faker, and if I made a certain type of a team that just fit all Faker's weaknesses and none of his strengths, Faker wouldn't win in that team. Even Faker might be the wrong player for that team. So the question is this, like, what are the strengths and weaknesses of Broxy? Because he must have weaknesses, so if you can give us an insight on both angles, people can make up their own mind as to whether he'll be good in this team or not. Perfect. What are his strengths? What's his biggest strengths? I think his biggest strength is being a teammate. I think he's, like, a top-tier teammate. Like, he's someone that you want to have on your team, you know? Like, he's someone that, like, supports all his teammates, takes care of everyone. Good attitude. If exactly is a great attitude towards practice, he has a great attitude towards his teammates. He always tries to make sure everyone's all right, everyone's finding solutions. He's trying to help when he can, right? And that's like even when he can't, he's trying to help. So I think that's just one of his biggest strengths in the sense of like when you have this guy on your team, you can't complain about having him, right? You're never like, oh for fuck's sakes, he's doing this. Like never. You can't be like, oh, he's doing this, right? Um, one of his weaknesses in my experience is that adapting during the game was something that wasn't uh, okay. natural to him. At least is how I felt when I was playing with him is like, let's say, uh, and, and this was something I know it's a lot, right? Is like, let's say the coaching staff had like a pathing set up. They discussed the pathing. Uh, we're going to play towards bot side. And then, you know, you know me, I, I see an opportunity. I take an all in level one. I'm like, yeah, this guy's, you know, he's running it down. I kill him or I don't. And the, and the lane's in a state where the first jungler that gets there will have influence, right? It'll influence the lane significantly. And then that was troublesome, you know, so sometimes like he, he didn't want to, it's like, oh, you know, like you shouldn't have traded there in the first place. Yeah, but it was good if you came and then the discussion okay. grows there, right? So adaptation during the game was something that, uh, especially early, early, early on was difficult. But, you know, 
through expressing what I wanted to do and, and, and figuring out ways, we reached the point where whenever I wanted to play that aggressive, I would have him come my side, right? So it's not, it wasn't a problem that wasn't solvable. It's just, you know, spontaneously I'm on stage, I'm playing Rengar into Camille. Uh, I'm sure people remember that one. I slay. Yep. I, I, I've uh, literally thought I was going to say the Rengar game because this this right. actually just, yeah, I, I, you were up I 30 CS him. in lane. Yeah. Exactly, I'm destroying this guy. I'm creating slow push after slow push. And then because like we're so focused on trying to defend that bottom side from the prep, right? Like I never felt like I got the opportunity to call my jungler to just dive this guy because he was completely out of the game. Like he, he was not playing the game against me um, uh, in that particular game. So that was a bit tough. And then that was a good example, I think, of, of when that could be a struggle. But again, I feel like if, if, if we talked it through and like helped each other understand the situations and whatnot, I think we could learn from that. And I think, again, that's one of his biggest strengths, right? Like he's, how do I put it? Like he's a person, right? He sees when something went wrong and he wants to solve it. Yeah. And and I think that that is a huge strength. So he's right? the opposite of forgiven is what we've, what we've, uh... I mean, it's just, he's not black and white, you know, it's not yeah. like, oh, you, you entered me. That's bad. It's, it's more like, okay, you made the game hard for me. How can I make the game easier? Like, how can we solve this, right? How can we make the game easier for everyone? How can this game progress in a way where that's comfortable for everybody? So yeah, I think that uh, as long as Team Liquid uh, are capable of holding these discussions and talking to each other, which I'm sure they are, like I, I sincerely doubt that a team of their caliber can't just have like a rational discussion like that continuously, uh, where they reach a point where the consistency will come, you know, like just like we had with, with Roxas, like you know what to expect from, from the team, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, makes uh, makes sense. I mean, I guess it's kind of worrisome because in, in Team Liquid, I feel like they've always been kind of like a rigid team. They never struck me as a team that's really good about like adapting on the fly. I mean, obviously, like late game, they make good decisions. But when it comes to like right. game plan, like the, the game that sticks out to me um, is the the game versus Damwon where they had like the lane swap with the Scion. They like a Nivea. It was uh, pretty much mm. their last game to try to get out of the out of, out of the group because if they lose that game, they're out. Um, and they just ended up just like going for for a dragon and, and you could tell the dragon didn't look good but it seemed like it was so core in their game plan where it's like okay well we developed tp advantage like we got them to swap like this is when we take the dragon it seems like they've always been super rigid with like this is our game plan this is how we want to play etc so i feel mm -hmm. like having another player that's not like willing to adapt on that team could be troublesome in the long run but i mean i guess we'll have to see how the season uh, I, mean, I think i think plays it's out. the opposite of that i think it, it's it, it might be troublesome in the short run because i feel like honestly as a game league of legend in league of legends based on your draft and whatnot you can mm -hmm. reach that point as a team right where you reach, reach a point where you see the champ select and you can plan out the first 15 minutes of the game right yeah. it is possible if everyone knows their role and everyone uh, plays it properly it's just that when there's misplays happening when there's outplays happening uh, anything like this that is when uh, having on the fly adaptation is necessary and especially when you haven't built that discipline as a team yet uh, and synergy in a way, right? Just being all on the same page is really important, right? Because you have to trust everyone's going to do their individual part the way they're supposed to. And the way they're supposed to is not the perfect way. It's what you've planned. That's just how it is, right? And that can be good enough. And that's why TL, for example, won four, four splits in a row, right? It is, it's they, what they planned is what they did. And it might not have been a, the optimal move, but it was what they knew yeah. was going to work. I, just, I would actually compare this to like the Dardoch to TSM move, which is even though Team Liquid was mega successful in NA and they were obviously winning right. all the splits, it sounds to me like from the players I've talked to, like a lot of that was just like they literally just left the jungle role to Xmithy and he just had to know exactly what he was doing and where to go and who to help and all, and they would just play in their lanes, which might sound like the dream scenario. Right. But in most teams, the reason I give the Dardoch analogy is like TSM clearly had an issue in integrating their jungler, and Dardoch is a very headstrong jungler. So at least you know one way or another. You're going to have to fix that problem. You're going to have to figure out how to communicate with this guy, how to build a relationship, how to get him to do what you want. Similarly, in Team Liquid, it's not good enough if you want to actually be one of the best teams in the world, not just the best in NA, to be like, well, we're just learners, we're just learners, it's the jungler's job to know when to come. No, you have to actually develop your relationship. Right. And as, as Whipple was saying here, if, if your jungler isn't someone who naturally does that, then you better build up protocols. You better know when you can call him or you exactly. explain to him why you need him at a certain point, even if it breaks the game plan, like he's saying here. So I wouldn't put it all on Brock or either like i definitely think the players in team liquid have a responsibility sure. they chose this guy they've seen him play they probably scrimmed against him before they should know what they're getting and then as a result it should be a work in progress he shouldn't have to come in yeah. tomorrow and be everything X smithy was because actually he's got certain qualities X smithy doesn't have like his mechanics yeah. are way better than X smithy in For 2020 sure. so sure. he has his upsides yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess the reason why, I've, for the reason why I, I said in the long run it could be so so damaging is because Team Liquid has been like kind of the same team for a long time. They've always been this bot centric team where Impact's playing like 
pretty much tanks. I mean, even if he's playing carries, the carries are like team fight carries, like Vladimir, things like that. And um, right. he, he's the one that, that's supposed to just be, or like Aatrox, things like that. So he's he's always kind of playing on an island, and they're always just pressuring bot. It's like double lift and core JJ are going to smash the bot lane, then they're going to try to snowball through dragons and then win like that. Like So if, if everyone is with that mindset, like who's going to be the one that's actually going to be like, hey, we need to like fucking change this? Because I know that these players are conscious of this. I mean, they watch G2, and I feel like G2 is, is the best team about adapting on the fly. Like if you see like how they prep dragons and stuff, like when they're behind in, in games, they're really, really intelligent about splitting the map like well in advance like way before other teams do it so when i see when i see team liquid getting another player like that i'm like okay so who's gonna be the the, the like young person that doesn't have this rigid mindset to actually like break through and be like hey when we're playing the game we actually just have to be conscious of what what's actually happening in the game and throw the game plan out the window if it doesn't make sense so I mean, well to be fair i hadn't really thought of it before but when you actually put it like that team liquid might be the perfect team for broxer he just has to service the bot lane 24 <laughs> 7 and the guy who plays top lane actually likes playing weak side yeah. this might be broxer's this might be paradise for this okay. guy like, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it'll be so much better it's, it'll be so much better than playing exactly. with Blippa, who just wants yeah. to take every trade imaginable exactly, yeah. Blippo. No, Brox is like, right, I'm just setting up for mine, coming down the lane, and then he's like, going in now. Like, I, I, I'm to the river. Like, man, I, I know who Blippo is. Blippo is the guy who the, he loads into the game, right? It's two minutes into the game. He takes one trade, and he's already pinging the third minion wave. Like, hey, jungler, we can dive on this wave. We can dive on yeah, this yeah. wave. I mean, if I'm playing a champion that, that's designed no, to... No, I love, I love like, it about your place, though. Yeah. I love it. I love no, it. But I, I think mean, it's I think, uh, actually, super aggressive. You're talking about waves, I think this is a huge fucking deal, right? This is a huge reason why G2 is so much faster at this, so much more adaptable, is because mm -hmm. the players don't have to communicate about what wave to take and what to do on the map. Everyone yeah. does their own play, right? And you're asking who is going to be in that, like, not rigid. I think the core JJ can easily be... I think doublelift can easily be, I think any of their players, as long as they're smart, can easily recognize, you know what, contesting this dragon is just fucking dumb, right? And then you go into scrims and you're like, all right, we contested this dragon and we all ran it down and died, right? Mm -hmm. So how do we avoid that situation? And then you're going to come to the conclusion and if it's not the players, the coach will be like, you know what, I think you should trade sides, right? Like you should split them up, like just, just leave the entire bot side, it's completely, it, it's fucked, we can't do that. Let's just go to the opposite side of the map. And it's just a matter of, uh, while well, reviewing properly and recognizing the issue being contesting a side that you don't want to slash can't contest, right? And this is um, a problem actually where if you're a weak side player never actually contest, you can't trade sides on the map, mm -hmm. right? And and this is why uh, having an aggressive player on the weak side is never, uh, or doesn't have to be a bad thing, right? Someone like Wonder, for example, is someone that doesn't die pushing the weak side, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm saying. And that's like the quality I'm trying to achieve, right? But you have to play aggressive on the weak side in order to learn how to do it, right? Yeah. If I'm just taking the side on every game and I'm chilling on the weak side and then watching yeah. um, my my strong side misplay or whatever, then I just have to accept that my game yeah. is done. And that is just not something that I'm comfortable with, right? There was, so, there was something you said as a... Like, I think when, maybe it was on the LEC cast, but there was something you said recently that made a lot of sense to me when you were talking about playing the weak side, which is like how... Right. Um, just sacking everything on the weak side is, is not always a good move. Like, sometimes it's decent to die for a couple waves or die in a situation where maybe you can right. trade one for one for one and things like that. And I feel like not enough players right. play with that mindset because, they're like, even if you are on the weak side, there are still aggressive options that you can take. Absolutely. And, and, and I feel like G2 is really good at this because they turn their weak side into the strong side. But if your weak side player isn't actually ready to receive the resources, then you can't do that, right? And maybe that's the issue. Like, I'm just giving another perspective, right? Because, again, when G2 flips the map, all of a sudden, Wunder's pushing up, right? All of a sudden, Perks is pushing up. If they're in that side lane, Caps is pushing up, whoever, right? So, like, they they start as the weak side, but then all of a sudden, they start pushing up, and you're like, what's going on here? And you, you saw this in the game that we played against them, is I was playing into his Aatrox, and then all of a sudden, he starts playing way more aggressive, and I'm like, all right, something's off. Uh, literally 15 seconds later, Perks walks into uh, on a ward into my lane, and I'm like, ah, all right, he had a Rizal behind him. That makes sense, right? And that's what I'm saying. Well ahead, they're like, all right, we can't contest this side of the map, so let's play aggressive on our weak side, and people are starting to move to back that up. And that's why champions such as Rise for them have been so crucial, in my opinion, and why they're so good at these champions is because as soon as their strong side is, is faltering a little bit, right, and they're like, all right, maybe they can contest us, they flip the map into their weak side, use that global pressure and they're like you know what this guy doesn't expect it if he does trade thinking he's the strong side he's gonna get a rise on his head and die yeah no it's definitely true i mean when 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 you watch rise played by g2 it, it's completely different when you watch rise played in na it's like you see the champion without an ultimate 
The ultimate just doesn't exist. The ultimate is only a tool right. to get out of when you get pressured in like when you're getting one three one and they come to kill you. That's the only time we use it. But right. G2 actually uses it um, super aggressively. Uh, I guess while we're on the topic of champions, uh, one question I had for you, because I know you're like one of the things that I really uh, respect you for is your um, knowledge of lane matchups and things like that. Um, like you were explaining like uh, right. like Camille into Aatrox, et cetera, like in just the dynamics of the trade. Right. And one of the matchups that we have been like struggling with, and if you talk to pro players, you get completely different response from what um, people actually believe, uh, like, I guess at the highest level, like coaches, et cetera, is the Orin versus Aatrox matchup. So right. every pro player I talk to, tells me that Aatrox hard counters Orn. That, like, if you play Aatrox into Orn, you can just hard shit on the lane. But every single time that we see it in draft, at least in our region, in LCS, right. the Aatrox might be up 20, 30 CS, and it doesn't fucking matter. The Orn just scales, and right. they end up just winning winning the game. So right. what is your per per perspective on this matchup? Like, how good do you think Aatrox really is into Orn? Is it worth taking Aatrox and giving, like, Orn affiliates to teams, which is, like, what's happening all the time here? All right. Um, obviously, like this is a question you can't answer just bit, like on a, in a vacuum. Yeah, yeah, yeah in a vacuum is it worth taking Aatrox and then smashing the Orn? And what about for you then? Not. When you play it, why does yeah, it's a metric work? where I'm like, I'm happy to like. Let me put this way: I'm happy to draft into. I'm happy to take the Aatrox bind, and if they go Orn, it's like, do you know what? I'll play it. Mm -hmm. Right? It's not a matchup where I'm like, please pick me on, coach. Please, I think there's better answers into Orn for sure. It's not a matchup that Orn wants to go into by any means. It's not a matchup that he's like, fuck yeah, let me let me just get destroyed by Aatrox real quick for the first X levels. But basically how this matchup goes is by level 4 or 5, Aatrox has gotten enough base damage in order to really start pushing out and punishing Orn and then creates a situation where Orn has to overextend to get farm, right? And this is why this matchup doesn't look good. It's for some ungodly reason, every single Aatrox player I witnessed has to use their Q in the, move, in the wave. They have to use their moves in the wave, and then you push the wave. So yeah, Orn lost 80% of his HP. But you know what? If the enemy jungler comes and covers, then you can't kill him, can you? Yep. And in general, it's not really something you want to do. You don't want to dive on. So when you create a situation where Orn has to um, de-push the wave, like uh, you create a, a freeze, basically, and Aatrox plays behind that freeze, it's I think impossible. this matchup is extremely good. It, it's, it's unplayable for Orn, because yeah. Aatrox as a champion will honestly 2v1 you behind the wave unless you've got like a hard carry jungler and Orn hits 6, right? Mm -hmm. Like, as a champion, as soon as Aatrox has six, uh, Orn has no way of itemizing anti-healing other than Bramble Vest. But Aatrox has to choose to get hit by anti-healing in a 2v1 situation, right? He could just hard focus the jungler, right? So when I see, for example, Orn Sejuani, if Aatrox manages his wave properly, then I, I believe Aatrox can be up a couple of levels easily because it's just a, a, a matchup where he can literally 2v1 them if he plays well. Mm -hmm. Do you think do you think it's it's something that requires like just a, a like a higher level of coordination when you're playing Aatrox and Torn? Like are you comfortable as a player just being like I mean Aatrox as a champion in general is just like uh, he's not insane. like the best. Like he's not the best champion in the game, but he's just a very solid champ that can do what you need him to do. He can push waves fast. He can punish this lane very well and he's generally rather safe. Right? So when you want to get the most out of him, I'll give you an example. I played Aatrox in the Nocturne. I don't know why Nocturne got picked, but that uh, plays in the uh, NDC. And that's a very good example. Game, right? Yes, that's a very good example of what Aatrox can do. And if that's Orn or Nocturne, it doesn't fucking matter for me. He can come and ult on top of me. Orn can come and ult on top of me if they want. They're not killing me at that point of the game, right? So that if they want to come and break my freeze, then they're going to have to bring a lot, a lot of people, right? And, and that's what I'm saying. At that point, right, you've got a 30 CS lead. And then if the enemy jungler is investing resources into the Orn lane, to try and get something, to, to try and make him good in the game, it's worth it. Because at least at that point, your Aatrox has value in the sense of you're making Orn's team put resources into Orn. But if you're in a state where uh, Orn is just chilling farming and you're trying to pressure and take like one or two plates, do you know what? That, that, that a thousand gold lead you're getting from your lane isn't an amount of jack shit when he starts slamming his hammer on your AD carries Infinity Edge in, t in, in, 20, in 25 minutes and then laughs at you because he gets 700 health from his item upgrades. Like, <laughs> it doesn't matter. It, it, it's, it's more like in the game can Aatrox force the enemy jungler to apply, like, put it resources into an all lane, on lane, which isn't going to change the pace of the game at all, right? Mm -hmm. Orn's not going to get bigger faster. And then your team capitalizing on the fact that the enemy jungler has to be topside, or you taking a herald because you've got top lane priority all the time, and then translating this into an advantage for your team is what makes this matchup good, right? Orn versus Aatrox is not Aatrox farming until Death Dance, Cleaver, Therax, and then 1v5ing team fights. That's not what he can do. He can't do that. This champ can't, literally can't do that. This champ's yeah. too weak to do that. Mm -hmm. But what he can do is create a situation where his priority gets translated into his teammates. You create a gold lead for your teammates, and then your teammates can carry you. Make sense? Yep. Again, this is in general. It's something that really 
pissed me off about top lane and people are getting triggered that the role is bad. No, you're just fucking shit. <laughs> Honestly. Wait, so, so top bad. so top role isn't bad? It's, is that what you're saying? How the fuck is top lane a bad role when I'm rank one for the past three weeks playing it? Damn. Is everyone in Europe just that bad? Well, I mean, I mean, like, Shinshin tells me it's a bad role in mid diamond uh, in an is, everyone, is, is everyone in is everyone in challenger that bad that they can't be they can't hit higher rank than me in playing top lane? <laughs> oh, OG upset is rank three right now. Do you think AD carry is too weak? Yeah. Magi Felix, do, do you think Magi Felix is too bad at mid lane? He can't beat me. He yeah, can't no, get more I, than I, me? I guess by looking at the the EUS ladder, yeah, no, jungle just has to be the worst role. Nah, no, that makes sense. Jungle <laughs> is just actually, fucking rude. No, but my point is, is that obviously that's a stupid argument. It's more of a mm -hmm. joke. But my point yeah, is, yeah. is that top lane, yes, it's not a role where you power farm your Aatrox to three items and he walks over the enemy team one versus five. It's not a role where your Mordekaiser gets three items, death roams the enemy to carry, slays him on the spot, and then walks over the enemy team. Nah, you don't carry like that. You carry by making the enemy top lane a struggle. Making enemy team put resources into a lane that is considered not that strong, mm -hmm. and then transferring your resources, the, one you've, uh, the ones you've acquired on your own, and investing them into the rest of your team, right? Like, okay. I'm, I'm like, let me put it this way. Half of my games, I'm playing in Challenger. The enemy team's playing 4v5 for 20 minutes because the guy can't lane against me. I pick Pantheon and the guy can't fucking lane. I just run over him. I pick Set, the guy can't lane. The game's 4v5 for 20 minutes. I'm walking wherever I want and the enemy top lane is struggling and this tier two trying to push out waves, scared of me cheesing him in the bush. You're playing the game four versus five if you know how to play it. And don't get me wrong, it's not an easy role to play in the sense of like, you can just sit sit somewhere, pick a champion, farm 200 CS and 1d9. Nah, it's not like you can, like for example, Karthus and Jungle can do this. You, know? you yep. can pick Karthus Jungle, farm for 20 minutes. Uh, it's it's uh, what I do in Twitch Travels every game. <laughs> exactly, you farm for 20 minutes and all of a sudden, well shit, we can't beat this Karthus anymore, he's killing everyone with his ult. No, top lane doesn't have champions like that. But top lane has champions that are disgustingly oppressive. And when they use their tools to actually punish people that are bad at the game, which is what solo queue is, people aren't that great, right? They're not at the top of the game. When they make a mistake, they don't know how to salvage it. And they'll start doing stupid shit. That's yeah. how it works. Makes sense. When you're the better player, you can abuse this. You can acquire resources for yourself. And then you can give them to your teammates. For fuck, just please. Play I don't game. know how anyone it's is complaining game. about top lane in 2020. Like, anyone who does that must be, like, one of the newest people to League of Legends ever. You should go back in time when you had to play fucking Dr. Mundo. Or where, like, a exactly. carry game was, like, the occasional game of Nah. That was it. That was, <laughs> yeah. a, that was like, the best you could hope for. If you go, if you go watch LCK now, go watch Keen from A Freak of Freaks. Guy might be the best player in the world. And he's, like, the only, like he's got one world-class player on his team, Mystic. That's it. Aside from that, he's got, like, average team... The guy is winning off the games himself. He's a monster. Because think about it. The amount of variety in top lane now is bonkers. The amount of stuff you can Absolutely. play. You can choose to play a tank if you want. But if you want, you can play all these things that he's talking play about. Fucking so you can almost you want. guaranteed win the lane. Exactly. <laughs> right. I mean, it's not to say that, that, that like, top laners are... Like, don't get me wrong. Like, for example, you mentioned Hashinchin, right? I don't think he's wrong in saying that certain champions just aren't that good, right? For example, Aatrox. Yes, if you're trying to play Aatrox like a champion that walks over the enemy team one versus five, then yeah, he's a shit champ. He can't do that. That's just how the game works, right? It's a team game, and if you rely on yourself to carry the game alone, then you can't do that in 2020, I'm sorry. It's just not, it's like it's one out of 100 games where you're going to be that strong, right? Like, in general, the way, like, teams stomp games, or if you stomp a game in solo queue, it's you moving to your teammates and rolling over objectives, rolling over towers and picking up kills of people being there when they're not supposed to be, right? They can't contest it, they try to contest it, you kill them, you roll them over, you take the Baron, you go next, right? And, and it's the same for top lane. It's like someone's trying to push out your freeze. They can't. You kill them. Oh, now you, you get the kill. You push out your freeze. You take another wave. Your base, you got another freeze, and now you're stronger. And then the jungler tries to come, and you kill him too, right? And then, then you're super fed, and you can do whatever you want. But the, the reality of the situation is that top lane is just a role like any other. And honestly, I don't think there's a single role in this game right now that can carry the game one versus five playing perfectly, right? There's always going to be games where you're going to lose, even if you play really well. And there's going to be games that you win, even when you play poorly. And this whole excuse of my role shit is just like, well, yeah, you can argue that you didn't have any relevant impact in the game you lost. And you can argue that you didn't have any relevant impact in the game you won. But isn't that more you than your role? 
One thing that tilts me, dude, is where people don't take the... Like, okay, so in, in pro play, people understand the concept of a team having win conditions, but they don't treat the champions like that's the case. Like, it's not like a champion to be good has to be good at all phases of the game, at all times, has a lead over everyone. That's a broken champion. That's not what should ever be in the game. The idea is, when in the game is your champion strong? In what situations is it? If you play out of those conditions, you shouldn't win the game. It's like, the best example I could give you would be, when we came into this split, everyone was crying about Senna, right? Because if you just play in solo queue, oh, this is bullshit in lane. Look, like the unlimited range, like the heal and stuff. The point is, in pro play, that champion looked like a fucking joke. Half the teams that drafted it lost the game because guess what? That wasn't relevant in team play where you actually could t had real teammates who knew how to play around it or how to, once you're out of laning phase, they were doing nothing. Some of the best ADCs in the world were picking that champion and doing nothing in the game and getting even mocked for it. Like everyone was like, what the fuck? Can't they play that champion? It's like, no, Double everyone left. overvalued the strength of the... It's an obvious example, but, like, yeah. forgive him was the same. There's a whole bunch of them, mate. Most of the games I think it's played in LCS, it's lost. I think it's won, like, six yeah. out of 20 or something. But so, I, I, like, I always view that more about that champion's strength being more, like, in competitive, you're not going to, like, snowball your lane. It's it's all about just being able to take 2v2s and, like, 1v1s and just being able to swing top lane fights sure. or, uh, fights on the other side of the but map. they never do any of that shit. They were trying yeah. to play it like it was exactly. fucking Ezreal and we're going to 1v9 the game. It's like, that's not, that was never even the strength of that champion. So it's amazing how many even pro players have that mindset where it's like, it's like for some reason they can only accept, like they have to have all the broken champions in their role. Otherwise their role sucks. Like I think right now, actually the role balance is one of the best I've ever seen in League of Legends. Like even when obviously the junglers still complain, like, but our role's the worst. It's like, I will, I'll say this till the end of time. You might not like this, Tom, but the mm -hmm. role of a jungler is not to carry the game. It's to help other people carry the game. Like, uh, you might not like that. Just yeah. like all the support players didn't like when they were just ward bots and now they get all the fucking gold and do more damage than the mid laner. But okay. I think those roles, like, have a have a logic to them when, like, they have a Definitely. strength and a weakness. No, I, I, like, I, I agree with you on jungle. I think the jungle is not bad. I think the jungle is just the most frustrating role in the game to play. Um, if you play it in solo queue, I totally get it. Because in solo queue, you have to kind of play like you 1v9. Like, I get that. But I, in like in team play, I think it has like a reasonable level of agency right now. Like I think Definitely. the best junglers do have impact on the game. I 100% agree that in solo queue, jungle is unplayable. Like I mean, it's it's really simple, right? Like you could be winning on, you could be on the on your, you could be playing on your strong side. You could take four plates and four kills in 10 minutes, and then your weak side is just like running it down, right? Because they're like, oh, I didn't get my jungler. Well, whatever, whining like a little bitch, like. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's how it goes, right? Like, you can have that in your solo queue game, and that's really frustrating. I agree, but I can have that when I'm playing top lane too. My bot lane's complaining. My jungler's not... Sure. Our jungler's going top, top, top. And meanwhile, I've taken the turret at nine minutes, and I'm about to walk bot and give you the gank, you know? Like, I'm, I'm about to fucking gank your lane, but you, you're you just being a little cunt. So, <laughs> sure. I, I don't even want to help you anymore. Like... Like, no, this? Ju like, jungle is unplayable unless you mute. Like, I, I didn't mute people for the longest time, and you just end up in so many pointless arguments. I, you literally just have to mute your teammates when you play jungle I, I mean, these days. I, 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 I turned my chat off after two weeks. You know, two weeks, like, I, I, my mama, I explained this already. Like, after two weeks, I was just like, I'm turning my chat off. I don't even have chat on right now. It's pointless, honestly. It's just... <laughs> Like, and that's the thing about solo queues that the level of skill disparity also translates to knowledge disparity, right? Like you, you're just smarter sure. than the people on your team when you're the better player, right? And I'm not saying that you're always the better player. I can queue into people that are better than me, you know? And and, and that's great. And that's what's fun about this game is that in some games, you'll have to be the guy that takes initiative and carries the game, not necessarily by being the 1v5 carry victor or uh, Felkos or whatever. Sometimes you're just the pantheon that smashes the early game, goes bot, and takes the bot turret after taking top turret one versus one. Sometimes that's you. Sometimes as a jungler, you go solo kill the enemy jungler, uh, and you take the dragon, and then you take another dragon, and then by the f fourth dragon, your team's realized, wait, my jungler's smurfing, and he just took three dragons on the weak side already, mm -hmm. right? And then you've got a win condition to play for as a team, and that's ultimately what the game is about, is reaching a state where how can we set up the game where ultimately as a team, we can achieve a win, right? And that's the fun about League of Legends, is that all the work you've done around the map will eventually accumulate into the, the point where the game is going to be decided, right? And whether that's five versus five, mid, whether that's you split pushing, whether that's you whatever, is highly dependent on what champion you're playing, and that's what makes it fun, right? If I'm going if I'm going into a game and it's like it's 20 minutes and we group mid, how strong my team is and I am is direct feedback of how well I played that game. Right? Because if I was smashing top lane, I'd be super strong. And then if I use that lead to translate into my mid lane, my mid laner would be super strong. And then maybe my jungler profited from that. 
and then maybe if I'm really smurfing, I also shat on the enemy bot lane, and then all of a sudden my whole team is really strong, and we're just winning the game. But maybe if I'm sitting top lane, jacking off about how bad my champions are top lane, and how I can't play this champion or that champion because I can't <coughs> be nine, and then I walk into a team fight, and the only thing I've done is won my lane, then the rest of my lanes lose, and I'm just like, I guess my role was shit. Yep. I'll give you an analogy, right? Because one of the areas that I feel like if pro players could use this mental uh, model for the game, instead of thinking mm. of League of Legends as like every game, I could win it or I could be the star or I could carry, which right. is not possible in a, in a 5v5 game like League of Legends. Right. The model you could use is this, right? People who are professional poker players. I'm not talking about people who play tournaments. I mean, people who just play the cash games and their job basically is just try and win as much money from other people as they can in poker because they know they're in it for the long haul they're going to play hundreds of thousands of hands of poker and everyone could be different in some unique way they know right that i'm not going to win every hand even if i'm the best player even if i make all the right moves so first of all you have to literally be able to take the bad beat you have to be able to take the scenario where you have the you think the right decision you figure out the right thing to do and sometimes you still lose anyway like the wrong card comes turns out the guy misplayed his hand when you were reading what he was doing right you know there's a million ways it can go wrong what you have to do instead is think of it like this imagine everyone who was a poker player got the same 300,000 hands of poker but just in a different order so now the real game if you want to make the most money is when you have the bad hands and the bad situations to just make the best of them you're not going to win that hand the question is can you lose as little as possible right. or can you play like a smart way where like you make the right choice but then you can bail out the last second when you know it's ah, it's not quite right to continue on this hand like that mentality instead if you use that when you practice and even when you play pro games you could take this for the forgiven example if he wanted to show us what a brilliant player he is and how he's doing everything right the best way would have been to stay in the team and keep doing what he was doing and try and win other people over in the team and try and show them their flaws through what he was doing instead he basically just quit and said well since this isn't the perfect hand the perfect situation for me i'm out well at that point in time you, you're yeah. not the best player mate the best player can hang in there yeah I, I the one thing i'll say about that is so i used to play a lot of poker before i played league i was semi-professional in poker it was pretty much much all i did i, I think that the, the thing that was easier for me to handle about, poke, uh, about poker is that everything is kind of defined in a way like when you take a bad beat and you like you you put your money in good and you lose it's so it's so easy to accept because mathematically you know that it's like oh there's a defined am amount of number of cards and they're, sure. they're, and like you, you can read all the stats and everything and it's like okay out of every hundred thousand hands this will happen or this happens like one in every 200 times so like when you take the bad beat you're like oh well the next 199 i'm good like you tell yourself mentally that but in league it just feels like when you're playing solo queue when you're trying to apply that it just right. feels like it feels like things are less defined it's like oh well like Maybe I, I took the, the good fight, but like how many times is my mid laner going to actually misplay the situation that I'm handing him? And I feel like that's just like where the disconnect happens because it, it's like, oh, well, maybe I should just play more selfishly. And I feel like that's why in solo queue, it just develops more selfish players over time because you just feel like you can't trust anyone besides for yourself. And I don't disagree with what you're saying. It's just mm -hmm. it, it's that takes you that takes being the better man level two, right? Yep. Well, well. Or and just explain is level one, right? Level two yep. is admitting that, you know what, that situation was good and someone else fucked. Yep. Right? My decision wasn't bad. So I should make it again. However, it sucks that it didn't work out, right? Yep. And and, and that's just the, another level of responsibility that you have to take, right? Because it's easy to tell sure. someone else, you fucked up, you're shit. You know, like in solo queue, you, you put up a good fight, right? You lost the 2v2 mid at level three, and you end up losing the game because of it. And you're just like, my million is fucking shit, fuck you. Yep. Right. Oh, I say it every game. Instead of being like, you know what, you fucked up, you know, I, or whatever, you know, I, I can't really do much about it. You know, yep. I, I played that the way I should. I believe that that's the best. Mm -hmm. I guess I've I guess... got to move on. Mm -hmm. I've got to move on. That's all I can do, right? And and again, don't get me wrong, it's frustrating when it happens 20 games in a row, right? You, you're playing your 10th your game, your, your fourth game even. And that's the thing, right? When you're playing a limited amount of league per day, right? Let's say you're going to play six games a day, and four out of six, this happens every single day. You're fucked off. You fucking hate this. You don't want to play this game. Like, you're so triggered about it. And I've been there, right? Like, I've played solo queue pretty much uh, the majority of my last seven years. Um, I, I played as a gold scrub. I was shit at the game. I played when I was good at the game. I'm currently playing when I'm good at the game. And the only thing I've learned is that when I make a good decision, the only question I can ask is, what can I do better? And when I make a shit decision, the only question I can ask myself is, what can I do better? Because if you don't ask yourself this question, you're stuck. You can't just look at your teammates and be like, Yo, you're fucking shit. You misplayed that. I'll tell you right now. I've told you. I'm rank one right now. I still get teammates fucking up my 2v2 top. Of course. Yeah. 
of course. I, I'm fucking molding, right? Because I get, I get someone messing up my play, and I'm just like, my lane's fucked. I'll tell you what, in scrims today, it happened fucking self-made. Like, yeah. I was... I was super just good in the game, and then and then he made a decision that was different. And the only thing I can ask myself is, all right, he made a different decision. How can I react to that? Right? How mm -hmm. can I react? Even though I was great in the game and I made a great play, I got, I got like, my plan. In, my plan was my jungler comes and we we destroy this guy, and I take him out of the game. But he was thinking differently. So how can I adapt in a situation where I'm seeing what's happening? Because this is the thing that people don't realize when they make plays like this, right? Mm -hmm. You can see that your teammates are making a mistake. Yep. If you're actually a good player, you can see your jungler moving somewhere that's not your lane. And instead of being triggered of, oh, he should have been there, you can react. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's not coming? All right. Well, that's unfortunate. I could have gotten more out of this situation, but I can pull out now. Just like you as a jungler can realize, all right, my lane is pushing his wave too fast. I can't dive anymore. And take you back off and you're like, you know what? I'll just, I'll just take what I can. Right, and and maybe that's taking a camp. Maybe that's taking nothing. Maybe that's taking the scuttle crab. Maybe that's not nothing at all. But the point is, is that in league, and this is the beauty of it, you've got control of your of your character for every single second of the game, and that means when someone is making a mistake, you can recognize when they're making a mistake and react. You can actually adapt to the mistakes your teammates are making. It's just on you. It's a responsibility you have to accept, mm -hmm. and that's fucking hard. It's really fucking hard. I have a hard time doing that too. When my jungler misplays, sometimes I'm just like, fuck this guy. I'm going to end just to prove him a point. <laughs> right? I'm going to make this play, and if it doesn't work, I'm just mad because he wasn't there. Right? I'm going to dive him on my own now, and if I end, then it's his fault because he wasn't there. But that's just being a cunt. That's just being a, a childish, selfish, pathetic nothing. That's just being pathetic. Yep. It's because also the problem is, like you're saying, right? When you right. expect someone else to do what they could have done, right? especially if they're supposed to have right. done the best possible play they could have done, right. is nobody even holds themselves to that standard. Like if you just make just a good play, that's not the best. You don't go, well, what the it's fuck am I doing? Like, no, like think about it, right? Even the greatest teams of all time had players who weren't the best at their role. Like an obvious example is how many times did Faker win fucking Worlds with play with Bengi? When yep. the guy was actually, here's the key thing. That's probably the best example ever about teamwork in a game. Because what Faker was able to do, the genius thing he did was realize the few things Bengi could do and just play to that. And that actually allowed them to win. At the, same at the same exact era, when that Rocks Tigers team first came up before they got Pino, everyone forgets they didn't have Pino at the beginning. They had that guy, I think it was called Lee or something. He was garbage. Like, I've once told a story where when they came to boot camp in Europe, because Worlds was that year in season five, I know people who played him in like plat in, in solo queue, and I was watching, and he was a garbage player. But obviously, in his team, they must have figured out, like we were talking about before, Brock's like protocols. They must have had like this player knows when to demand he comes to the top lane. This player knows when to let him just play the game this person knows when to let him just do whatever the coach said and what they did is play around his weaknesses and to his strengths and as a result if you watched him in the pro games that's the reason they were going to semi-finals of worlds or lck finals like the idea you're always going to have the best teammates who do the right play every time that is actually like an infantile way of looking at the game it's not it's not reality it's never going to be like that in a team game exactly and i think that when you reach a point where you accept that he made a mistake and then you can discuss what the better play would have been is when you can reach that point where you can actually expect that, right? But just straight off the bat, and not to mention, like, the hardest part about it is when you tell him what to do, right? You tell him, I want you to be here, it's going to be really good, and then he doesn't. Accepting at that point <coughs> that he made a mistake is something that's normal, it's something that you should be able to do, but it's very frustrating, right? Because you have to accept that, you know what? It's not me, it's someone else's responsibility, and the only thing I can do is accept that. So I guess uh, one thing I wanted to talk to you about. I know I know you're you're close with LS, or at least you formerly were close uh, with LS. Sure. I'm not sure of your uh, relationship anymore. And um, mm. one of the concepts that, that he's been talking about, I don't know uh, if you've heard it, Thor. I'm, I'll explain it for our viewers for sure. Is is Sinner Champions? Do do you uh, have you heard about this? Uh, I've heard about it. Yeah. Do you do you, okay? So for for like our people watching, the, the whole concept is that there are champions in this game that require enemy mistakes to thrive. So champions so champions that people are throwing around as these sinner champions would be like Lee Sin, Elise, Olaf, champions that have like agency to do things early game but require enemy mistakes in order to thrive. Um, and you compare this to like other champions that you could play and like obviously since we're using jungle as an example and it's what I'm most familiar with, we'll throw that at, um, we'll throw out like Karthus for example, which was played a little bit in LEC where you're pretty much going to be strong regardless and if teammates don't make mistakes then it, 
like if the enemy team doesn't make mistakes and your team is able to play around your win conditions, you should be able to like By the win way, most of the games through it. But um, can yeah. I just say this is the Go most LS concept of all time because mm -hmm. even that premise of is course. actually laughable. Like the idea that like the thing about this champion is it requires the enemy to make mistakes. Uh, who are we playing against again? LS uh, human beings, right? Cool. Well, I'll just pick out then, right? What are you yeah. talking about? Like what game is there? Where, what there's a perfect there's a game anyone's ever played where every laner was so perfect, Lee Sin just couldn't ever get in and get a gank off. Get, what the fuck? What game is he talking about? Like, like I get his basic premise, but as usual, he's got way too extreme with, yeah. the, oh. with the descriptive terms. Well, uh, the reason why I thought that this would apply to, to Bwipo is when, when I watch Fnatic play, like, I don't, it feels like you guys play the Sinner champions every game. It's it's a Lee or Lee Sin almost every single game from you guys. So, I mean, uh, uh, obviously, like, like it, it's not something that you necessarily agree with, but, like, how much, uh, like, um, weight would you put on that concept? Like, do you believe that that's, like, a, a appropriate way to, to hmm. look at League, or do you think that it's just not viable because of, you know, how many mistakes are made even I, in the I, highest I level of games. I don't think the logic is bad. I don't think that, for example, Aatrox Orn, you had a great example there. Aatrox Orn, in, a real, in reality, Orn can handle himself in that lane. That's the truth. But the thing is, it's much easier to slip up when there's much more pressure on you, right? Like, if I'm on sitting under my turret at level 3, and I'm chilling, and the enemy has Akali jungle, I'm not giving a fuck, am I? Right? If that's a lease, I'm like... <laughs> you know... All right, what can she do? Three, three camps top into top. She can do red, blue, gromp into top. She can do whatever the fuck she wants into top. What right. ways that can make them make that mistake? Exactly. It's like she can do a lot of things to, to make the game harder for me, right? And don't get me wrong. There is ways to manipulate your own jungler to, and your wave in a situation where you can be safe regardless of your matchup, right? And that's true. The thing is just that, like, if you use uh, the same logic of, like, if you play a good game, right? If you like, because for me the logic is built up upon the fact that if your wave control is good, and the way you play the game is correct, then you, as the scaling champion, can weather the storm. Right? That's the logic. Yes. Now, someone that has the knowledge of how to play that wave correctly plays a sinner champion, but the sinner champion is stronger than you in the early game. That's that's why they're a sinner, right? Like they're they're yeah. stronger than, you, right? They they are stronger in the early game. So what if they manipulate that they know what you're going to do and punish you on that, right? That's the logic where you come from. Now, of course, I'm not like fully aware of what a, a sinner champ is and what isn't. So like for me, it's difficult to say like... Aatrox is a sinner, or, Orin is not a sinner. That's like Soraka yeah, no, is I'm not saying, a sinner. You know? I'm just saying it. I feel like it's too black and white because like, let me put it this way. Like I can see that picking Aatrox in the gangplank is a sinner, a sinner champion in that situation because Aatrox can't control the wave in the early game. Mm -hmm. Gangplank is stronger than him and Gangplank scales. So Gangplank's got a double advantage, right? Like he's stronger than you in the early game and he can control the wave, but he can also outscale you. So at that point, yeah, it's a sin to pick a champion that's weaker in both situations. Why of would course. you pick a champion? An early game champion. If it's well, I mean, in, it, in, in an A, However, what happens is, is the Aatrox just ends up shitting on the GP the entire game. Like you have someday yeah, just and, smash impact space. I mean, obviously, but, but like I, I'm, what I'm trying to entertain I'm, here I'm, is that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead with your point. Is, I was just making is, a joke. Is a, is a yeah obviously I understand what you're trying yeah, to say yeah, and that's yeah. possible that's League of Legends in a, in any in any case mm -hmm. but my point is more that like if I pick Aatrox into let's say uh, fuck knows what is a terrible champion into Aatrox there's not many but like uh, it's a terrible matchup you know I, I'm gonna destroy this guy as Aatrox I don't think Aatrox is a sinner champion anymore like mm -hmm. I, I think Aatrox is a champion that's just better than the enemy champ and he was the best for that situation so at that point is he sinning like I understand that you know picking a, a champion that's that's going to lose to a champion that scales better willingly is a sin i yep, agree you definitely. pick you pick aatrox one two enemy picks gangplank you've sinned right you, you're, you're running it down you're walking into that you're accepting i'm going to be weaker than a early game and i'm going to get outscaled i can see that being a mistake yeah but to say that picking aatrox at all at any given state is a sin that's just extreme you know <laughs> like that, that's, that's pushing it a bit that's like, just that, ls just, man that is just, that's just being like you know that's what? his like, world <laughs> yeah i'm just saying like at that point you're pushing it right yeah, yeah of course oh. you have to realize think about the world of all of ls's analogies like dragon ball z like magic <laughs> gathering like fighting games he literally sees himself as some sort of like he's like the fucking guru like master of kung fu or something you have to go to and the idea is obviously he has his very rigid system and he punishes you if you don't know what you're doing you know and makes you do all these weird exercises that's just his that's his swag so we all know part listen like 10 percent of it's an act 90 percent of it's real but it's just it's not as extreme as it seems like he actually knows that some of these exactly. are too rigid exactly. as rules. Just, okay. but he also knows that like it's straight fire if you, if you just say it in a very bold way you know like that
<laughs> Do you have to go now, Dom, anyway? Um, I, I have to go kind of soon, maybe in like 20 minutes. I have the All right, fair uh, enough. Twitch rival. Just checking. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to see, like, is, if there's anything specifically you want to talk about, like, I, I know we kind of go free flow with the show. We just, uh, um, say anything, uh, we just go wherever the conversation takes us because I feel like that's just what ends up being most interesting. But is there anything that specifically, right. like, in League of Legends has been, like, entertaining to you or you think would be, like, a great topic yourself? I don't mean to put you on the spot or anything, but just, you know, I, well, I always yeah. like to try to feel like the guests gets to say whatever right. they want on a show like this, you know? I'm pretty happy. I got to talk about the solo queue thing because, like, it actually bothered me that people, in, like, in general, think top lane is a weak role when it's just like the game is a 5v5 game, right? Like, mm -hmm. come on, like, you play your part. And if you're good at playing your part, you're going to do what you can, right? And right now, I feel like top lane's part is being somewhat of a jungler, right? Yep. Like, in the sense of top lane is a role that's, that's very far away from the game, right? The, the island is what everyone always talks about, right? But that's the thing. If you're the one that has agency on the island and you can leave it, it takes a while for the other guy to come follow you. Mm -hmm. And that makes you, in a way, a jungler, right? Because you can be a, a, on a side of the map that the other guy can't be yep. at a specific time, as long as you've set it up in time, right? You've set it up properly, you've been ready for it, and you're strong enough to do it. Yep, makes so sense. That's why, that's the only thing I really wanted to get across in, in, in the talk is like, <laughs> Damn, please, you're, you're, you're going to have an angry, you're going to have an angry tweet later today from Mishinchin. That's all I'm telling you. But um, I, mean, I, I guess one of the final things we could, we could end up uh, uh, talking about is, I guess. I like, like Mishinchin, by the way. He's great. Mishinchin's great. Oh, he's, he's hilarious. His stream is well, I mean, extremely I, I, I entertaining. Don't even think, I don't even think that he's wrong about a lot of things, you know, like him, like the stuff, like the Aatrox stuff, for example, like he wants uh, Aatrox to be able to kill super minions. I don't disagree. It'd be nice, honestly. Like Aatrox is a champion. Like it is something that will make his scaling a little bit bearable when he falls behind at least. Yeah, you know, and sure. that's what I'm saying. I don't feel like he has a bad idea about a lot of things. I, I actually think he's right about a lot of it. It's just sometimes it's too he's far. Pushing it. Yeah, it's he's too far. Pushing it. Um, I guess I guess the last thing that that we'll talk about is just uh, like the relative strength of LEC and like how you view other teams. Because when we talk to Perks, he still thinks it's you know G2 at the top, Fnatic second. But I mean, right. right now there's a bunch of teams that are contending with Fnatic for like potentially being the second best team. So Misfits right. is, a, is a great example. Uh, people are telling me that Fibivin's playing super, super well in scrims. Obviously on stage, he looks he looks really good. Um, Mad Lions is having a surge. Obviously uh, you had a rough game against them last week. Like how, how, right. how strong do you think these teams are? Do you think that they're just pe picking up like other wins? Do you still think that we're going to have the top four? Because coming into the split, right. the top four right, was going right. to be like... All right, uh, all right. I mean... I G2, gotcha. Fnatic, I, I, I Rogue, gotcha. uh, Origin, etc. So right. yeah, go I ahead. Gotcha. Take I'm going to keep this simple like every single year. Um, every single split basically is that all these teams look good and they're all great and blah, blah, blah. But they're gonna, are they going to survive? Will they survive until the end of the split? Because mm -hmm. that's usually the problem, right? At some yeah. point, the problems are going to come. I'll tell you right now, you know, some of these teams, you know, maybe they're in a honeymoon phase. Maybe they're playing well. Maybe they're just that good. You can't really tell because you don't know what's going on behind the scenes. But the reality is, is that pretty much every single time this has happened, at least as far as my career has been going on, mm -hmm. teams like this have crumbled near the end. 2018 Schalke, I believe it was in spring with upset, right? Like that team crumbled completely in spring split, right? Misfits, the uh, our super team, you remember? Yep. That team crumbled completely, and they had oh. a pretty good start, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. And yeah, that's they, what I'm saying, right? And then yep. that's been the story of the LACs. Can these teams survive? Are they going to make it till the end? Mm -hmm. When, like right now, yeah. we're running a race, right? We're running a marathon. Yeah, sorry, I was distracted and for I, a second. Everyone in chat is going crazy. Apparently, Poe Belter just got a sign to CLG. He's going to start mid lane over Crown. So that's why I was distracted for a second. But yeah, continue. That's with. pretty insane. Yeah, so Crown, really Crown you know, world champion. Really people were talking Poe about, Belter. is he going to get benched or not? Like, because he's, he's obviously been playing pretty, pretty poorly. But, um, Shit. I did yeah. not expect that. Yeah, so I just wanted to, to fill you guys in. That's why I was looking away for for one second. But yeah, Too continue with your point. Just fix his brain, eh? Oh, that's a shame. Well, <laughs> anyway, here's the question, though. If you're setting up like that, boy, Paul, now you have to answer your own questions. So here's the thing, right? You have G2 at the top. Then you have basically like five other teams. You have you, Origin, Misfits, yep. Mad Lions, and Rogue. These are the teams that people yep. are putting in this category, like we're saying, where it's not just G2 up here. In fact, after last week, like G2 looks vulnerable even. So the question yep. is, like... Either pick one that uh, I'll give you the two ways you can go on this. You can pussy out and just pick the ones that will last, that you think will make it to the playoffs and be good. <laughs> or the big balls move would be to explicitly say, I pick Team X, whichever one of those you want. And I, I don't think they're going to make it actually. So we'll, yeah, I'll give you the choice on this right, one. Which let, me one you want to go? let me have a look. Let me have a look. Let me have so, a look. So it'd be, it'd be Rogue, it'd be, it'd be Misfits. I mean, let me put it this way. Let me put it this way. In playoffs, I think that um, for playoffs, like, let me just, let me give me a second. I'm going to. Pull up the standings real quick so I can actually have an accurate statement here. Sure. So I don't just go for it. Take we'll all do it as well. We're all, we'll all think of some angle on this we can go mm -hmm. with. All right. So um, in general, I feel like most teams, um, like for example, Misfits, I think they look pretty strong. And I don't think they're 
bad team by any means. But my question is, how exploitable are they in a best of five series, right? Like, how many te players of their team are vulnerable in a best of five, right? How many players are going to uh, fall into a trap? Like, for example, I think Misfits is a team, their top laner done that, and I think he's a pretty decent player. But the problem I feel like he has is his champion pool is incredibly limited, right? I don't think he's performing incredibly great on anything other than... Uh, why I don't know. Actually, I haven't really followed all his games, but uh, I personally feel like, as a player, he doesn't perform on much more than set and gangplank, right? Gangplank. Like that's what I'm. That's what I'm aware of right now. Maybe he smurfs it on a different champion, but uh, that's what I know. Finn, for example, I know he plays a very good Aatrox. He plays a solid Kled and Irelia, and that's about it. Right. Yeah, if I mean, his, his set he him. his set ran it down multiple games at LEC, which which is weird because I he feel like that would be his champion. Champion. Right, and uh, maybe he just had a bad performance. But again, mm -hmm. from my experience, I feel like Finn is a, a player that has a, an expense, like a, ex, like a big champion pool. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, there's how many of the players rely on the meta, right? Mm -hmm. Razork, for example, he's coming in. The jungle meta is carry junglers and echo, right? He post yeah. with echo, perfect meta for him. He looks great. He plays Lee Sin, looks great. He plays Elise, looks great. He plays Gragas, looks great. Well, tanks are getting buffed. Yeah, Sejuani just. Uh, how, how, got is buffed. A carry jungler, how is a jungler going to look when. Uh, Meta Skana, Sichuan, Isaac. Trundle, counterpick. These are questions, exactly. These are questions you have to ask. You know, how good is someone's Olaf? Right? Because this is a champion you need to bust out sometimes. You know, like sometimes tank meta, your team wants to play fast in the early game. I've got no choice but to play Olaf into the Sichuan because the Lee and Lee Sin are too shit. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and that's where teams like Mad Lions and, or, and, and, um, Misfits especially, which are two teams that were unexpected to do well, is where question marks are for me, right? Is because their champion pools haven't been tested. Mm -hmm. They're not going in deep. Yeah, they're looking good right now when their junglers have the jungle meta. It fits them. It's great for them. Are they going to survive when Cinder Hulk comes back? <laughs> the dreaded Cinder Hulk. Oh, God, please. No, no more. <laughs> you know what I mean? When Cinder Hulk returns, are they, are they going to be there? Are they going to be able to perform at that level? Are they going to have that type of performance? And are their teammates in that situation going to be able to pick up the slack? Right? Are their teammates going to be carry players strong enough to compete with Reckless, with Perks, with Caps, with Nemesis in, in, in these 5v5 settings? Right? Because when it's in the Hulk meta, you have to consider that your AD carry can't just play Filios or MF and then watch your carry jungler kill five people. Nah, you're going to have a Sijuani and you're going to walk into a 5v5 team fight and then you're going to outperform those players? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, no. Like, I, believe, I, don't, I don't think so. I, I've, I've, I've watched enough League of Legends for the past. What? I've watched it for like what six or seven years now. Uh, I watched uh, SKT in season three, right? And, and 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 since then, you know, every time it's a tank meta, you're looking at your carries. Can you compare Kazi and Reckless? I'm sorry, I don't think. You know what I mean? I really don't believe it, right? Can you compare him in the laning phase, uh, having a solid game? Everyone, Absolutely. everyone has Kazi been compare, comparing Kazi to Reckless. It's yeah, a funny one because to bring it's up. a meta. It's a meta because it's a meta where he doesn't have everything on him. He's not the only carry on the team. His jungler's playing Lee Sin and, killing, and, and smurfing on people. Mm -hmm. He's killing people, kicking people. He's also in sometimes in games where they lose before it even gets to all the team fights. So you don't even have to exactly. show what you can do, whereas Reckless exactly. is like pretty much money in the bank. Right now, there's champions, there's champions in the middle that are just straight bullshit in team fights, right? You've seen Gragas. He's, he's bullshitting people left and right with his body slam flash ult combo, which is still a thing. God help me. You know, this has been broken for the past seven years of League of Legends. <laughs> yes, body slam flash on Gragas has been a game winning, game winning place. And, for seven years and he still does it yeah uh, and and my point is just that when there's sejuani and um sejuani maokai sejuani on sejuani whatever you don't get your jungler to make a game winning play you get your jungler to stand in front of you and you're going to have to win the game through dealing damage and positioning and are, are you going to be the carry then is the question i don't believe so and that's why i think that these teams don't last it's not necessarily bad or worse when it comes to that type of meta their carries can't keep up individually. They're not as good mm -hmm. as the top of the league, right? The four names I mentioned are, are the biggest examples, right? Like these are the guys, right? These are the guys when the meta hits control, may JD carry, tank, tank. Mm -hmm. I don't believe it. I don't believe that these people can shine out ahead of them, right? And I feel like this is one of the things I've had with Upset, where it's like in these metas, Upset never was the carry. He actually didn't end up carrying his team to the finish line more often than not. And maybe that was because his tank players were just worse. You know, maybe whatever excuse you can give me there, go ahead, try. But ultimately, he wasn't as good. Like, that's how I perceive it. And that's just ultimately how I look at every single competitive meta. Because I'm telling you right now, when it comes to a best of five and shit hits the fan, someone's locking in on.
and someone's going to lock in Sijuani. And the question is, are you going to carry? He's going to be able to team fight against that. Yeah. And you know what? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the meta is going to stay the same and we're going to be seeing champions that run around one-shotting people left and right. Gragas body slam flashing on people. Elise, Lee Sin getting sick kicks and whatnot. I'm just saying that that type of playstyle is something that is way easier to win as a carry player. Mm -hmm. uh, and it puts more burden on jungle players and whatnot. No, I'm kind of with Whippo on this one. Like, the big problem I have is if the stand-ins make it look sexy as fuck. Everyone's all bunched around each other. People have top, right. taken wins off top team. It makes you believe that everyone's even. But the difference is, like, the two names that no one expected to be there, like Mad Lions and Misfits, Misfits. Yep. as he just alluded to, is basically junglers like Smurfin, who I don't know that anyone actually believes they're that good yet. Like, it's actually a, a surprise. It's impressive that they've done exactly. as well as they have. But the difference is, if that goes away... If I look at Origin and Fnatic, who are obviously in the same group, like their carries have money in the bank. They are players that have been the best players in LEC for the last exactly. two or three years. Like the odds that those players will somehow fall off is very, very low chance. So the real problem I have is Mad Lions and Misfits have to keep it up. Those other teams, is all, exactly. it's, they're pretty much guaranteed to be at this track, this pace for the rest of the split, pretty much, I think. Yeah, and, and the Rogue's the, the one I'm not the, sure about because, as you say, like I'm not really sure about Finn. He's the one player that's like sort of the question mark for me. The rest of the team's fairly solid. I think their jungler definitely has way too small a champion pool. But they here's the thing: they have like just enough players. I feel like they could maybe do it. They could maybe be like the third or fourth best team. But the other ones, Mad Lions and Misfits, I, I think that people are kind of riding the hype train a bit too hard on those ones. Yeah, I mean, I think that there's a lot of games where when you look at the record, it might not be completely indicative of like how all the games went, right? Because a win is a win, but if you look at um, like Mad Lions, for example, like their, their win against Rogue, where they look like they're the worst team throughout most of the game, they're getting out, like shit on all over the map, and then up, oh, they have this broken ass Soraka. Soraka. Yeah, they have right. the broken that's Soraka that's top. That's and, that champion messed with the standings for sure. Yeah, yeah, so I, I feel like that's a win, and then they had the game where they're down 6k gold to Shalka, and then you you end up getting a win there. So I, I'm pretty I, I'm pretty off on... Um, on Mad Lions, I feel like they're the worst out of uh, the six teams that we mentioned. Even though, like, individually they have some good players, clearly, and some of them would overperformed, as an actual team in League of Legends, they don't look that impressive, mate. Like, that game they had against Origin the other week, I thought that was a joke. Like, half the time they were just, like, engaged into fights and they just got instantly smashed in. Like, their sense for when they could fight was terrible. Yep. I mean, they, they, they played really well against us, I'll give them that, for sure. I think they, they had a, a solid game plan and they outplayed us pretty much all the time. Like, I think they had a really solid game, Mad Lions, against us. And I'll give it. I'll give that to them. But ultimately, for me, it's impossible to make predictions like this because, like, I mean, it's not impossible. I can tell you right now what I think. I think that G2 and Fnatic are, are going to end up in the playoffs, being the best teams in the league. Because again, we've got we've got money in the bank, if you will. Do you know what I mean? Like, the meta is going to reach a point where you're going to have to rely on your carry players at some point. Uh, at least I believe so, because that's what League of Legends has always been, right? Like, tank meta will come. Don't worry, winter yeah. is coming. You know, you send the Hulk is coming. I, I alluded to it, and it will. You know, right now, Sunfire's gotten buffed. Let's see where that leads us, are we? Yep, definitely. But my point is, my point is, is just that if these junglers don't get those carry champions, you know, Razork against G2, he killed Caps, what, seven times? Do you think Caps is going to run guy. it down seven times every single game? you think he's going to die nine times on Aphelios every other game? That game looked fucking tough. They had a hard time winning that game, despite Caps dying nine times like a clown. <laughs> True. And that's what I'm saying, you know, is it's like they took the win, they deserved the win, they played well. Not nothing to take away from them, but yeah. I mean, anyway, that is the when best. you're in playoffs. Uh that is the best part, in my opinion, about how good all these teams are at the moment in different ways, though, is what you're going to get to actually see now is all that bullshit of last year where G2 was making, like, haha, we're just doing troll picks because we can win all the games easily. You can't win any of these games easily. Like, what's good is, I love watching G2 go behind because they are, like, the most creative at getting out of it. Like Whippo said earlier, they always have a million extra win conditions that like they can literally make the, the weak side player can suddenly just become the player that has to carry the game. So it's super sick if you're a fan because actually they're going to be in loads of tough spots over this split they'll probably still win most of them they are the best team but at least they're gonna get pushed it's not like last year where there was like two teams could legit hope to beat them straight up unless they trolled basically yeah i mean i think, I think uh, that the meta allows for this yeah and that's great and also i feel like if mad lions and misfits end up fifth six i feel like that's an overperformance overall if you look at coming into the split like no one thought that they would be there like most of the people would have put shalka there with the roster that they had like people were, were saying that they would sure. be a fifth six uh, they can still team. be there like that's yeah. the thing right week four let's calm down a second you know like let me put it this way last time i came to a week like last year when i came in the week oh four, you were like split. zero eight like, one and seven zero eight some no, shit no, like that like, one, one and five three and five, five ago, seven, like that. three and seven by the end of week five okay. and seven. 
Okay. And three, I three, think three. it was still. I, the thing is, though, I remember I looked it up. I think no team. I think only like maybe the H2K team from a year before. I think there's only like one team ever had even made playoffs from that though. Because obviously, if you get that kind of record, you basically have to go like 80 percent win rate the rest of the split. Right. But you did, so fair enough. Right. Yeah, yeah. But that's what I'm saying, right? So like maybe Schalke pulls off the same type of comeback, right? And that's the fun thing about the LEC. And, and what I'm telling you right now is that the meta will decide this. I'll tell you right now, a champion that helped us get there was Silas. The champion was disgusting. This champion was gross, and we would yep. just pick it every game, and Nemesis would just push mid and go bot level 3, and the enemy team couldn't play the game. They like, couldn't do shit, because Silas would just one-tap your waves, he would just one-shot your waves, go bot, and then uh, what are you going to do? And then people finally realized how stupid this champion was, and then either it got nerfed or it got banned, and then you reach a point where this champion isn't like a part of your of your meta anymore, right? Like, you're not a team that can abuse this anymore, and it's the same in, in the current situation of like, are these teams that are winning so much right now, are they going to be able to continue using the champions that are so strong for them right now, that are performing so well for them? Like Gragas as a jungler, for example, is the champion going to get nerfed in the near future? Please, God, please. I hope so. <laughs> but let, let's say he doesn't, right? All these teams, Origin, for example, is riding the Gragas hype train like none other, right? They're abusing the living shit out of the champion. And, and how good do they look without it? Is the question, right? Like, when Gragas gets removed from the meta and Karthus is no longer a playable jungler, how good is Origin going to look like when they have to play different champions right please don't know if uh, this man that's the only way a 30 year old like me can get into challenger <laughs> these days come on no, but it's just like uh, i'm not saying like, this is a origin specifically but let's say uh, you know lee sin at least get gutted out of the meta or cinder hulk just takes over sejuani's back mm -hmm. who sejuani is, is gonna who sejuani is gonna be the sejuani to look out for at the end of the split it's Why? gonna be is it self-made He's going to be self-made in Yanko, yeah. so that's going to be... Ask him, is, is, is he ready to just be on tank duty for the rest of his life? You ready to play some Skarner? I think he's ready to be, uh, I think he's ready to be on, the, on the leash. All right, perfect. I think he's had enough fun for the first few weeks of uh, LEC playing Lee Sin and all whatnot. I think he's ready for the leash. Are you awesome. ready for the leash? Ready for a party on Jango, man. <laughs> <laughs> he's ready for some Pante on his head, so... Oh, man. Uh, not yeah. quite ready on the leash, but uh, my point is just the longevity of, 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 of these players is highly dependent on the meta. <laughs> In my opinion, like I think the Mad Lions and, and Misfits, they will fall off if the meta turns into this type of, of, of tank situation because I don't think their players are that great at playing tanks. Like I don't think Dan Dan is a renowned tank player. Uh, Rogue is another team that comes to mind that will struggle in this type of meta, in my opinion, because I don't think Finn will be a great tank player. Um, and, and that's just something you have to consider is that over the course of a split, even if a team looks good at the start of it, are they going to survive a meta shift? Definitely. I mean, I guess I guess that's where we'll, we'll end the, the episode. We'll have to see uh, if this ends up ringing true, if uh, Mad Lions and Misfits end up, you know, not being able to hang with the top teams once the inevitable Cinder Hulk buffs and tank meta comes to be. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, thank you definitely for coming, Whippo. Uh, I appreciate your insight on top lane and just like how you view things from all the way from solo queue to pro play matchups, all that stuff. It was great having you. So anything you want to shout out? I know you started streaming like recently more often. Uh, so if right. you want to shout out your Twitch, your Twitter, anything, go for it. Uh, not really. I'm, I'm a bit too toxic, I feel like. But <laughs> All right, okay. I mean, that's fine. I mean, if, if it's my... To, to be honest, dude, it's my viewers. What the fuck? What do you mean? What do you mean? I turned my chat off, so I'm no longer toxic. But um, uh, yeah, if people want to watch me stream, uh, I'm over at twitch.tv slash um, awesome. I'll stream as much as I can, but uh, it's something that like I just do casually. Um, that said, I just want to take the moment to appreciate you guys being here with me and uh, having a good chat because I enjoy it. You know, I love talking about this. Yeah, game. sure. We'll definitely thanks have you on in the future, man. And, uh, it, it was great that you were able to come on. So I like hearing that. Thank you so much. Yeah. So thanks for coming. Uh, I appreciate uh, everyone watching the stream and I'll see you guys next week. Peace out, guys. All right. GG. Cheers, Peace. Matt.